jazz hands, jazz hands, people, come on, jazz hands, and tell the, and tell the, L, I don't see the jazz hands, no jazz hands, here we go, jazz hands, we're live, welcome back, <laughs> we're in the Big Daddy's Gun Studios, we're live from Gainesville, I'm Hank Strange, this is the Who Move My Freedom podcast, put on your big girl panties, because we have a special, special guest tonight. Mr. Mark Krebs of Krebs Customs <laughs> is in the building with us. So we're we're definitely going to be talking AKs. Ooh, like look at, that. Look, look at this gorgeous, beautiful, awesome AK that we have here from Krebs Custom, the KV13 Mod 2 with a um, a chaotic suppressor on it from Liberty. There you go. It's beautiful. We're going to talk about AKs like that and many others. Welcome, Mark. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? Good. Good. Look at those beautiful. That's like a painting, a beautiful painting, like a Picasso behind you, my friend. That's just so awesome. Anyone who's listening to this on the iTunes, when we put the iTunes up in about a week or so, you guys are missing like uh, uh, like an orgy for the eyes if you're a gun guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Some beautiful guns behind Mark. And, and there, there's a handsome young man there, you know, part of the Krebs Custom crew. So, can we t can we tell them who that is? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. That's Simon. What's up, Simon? Hi guys. How's it going? Okay. Good. Good. Okay. We also have we also have uh, some other you know special guests in here as as well as Mark. We have El Tenda. What's happening? Hi, I'm What's El Tenda, and I'm gonna grab custom dependent. So. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a meeting, sound like a meeting. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't we couldn't do this without El Tenda, so we have him. Uh, I don't know if we have him for the whole night, but definitely we had to have El Tenda here, you know, to to hang out with us if we, if we were going to have uh, Krebs Customs come on. And of course, we've got my buddy, Mr. Walter Keller, of Safety Harbor Firearms, I'm with, here, his, I'm here. with his Trump rooster patch on his hat. Check yeah. out that! Look at that! Yeah, I oh, I gotta get you one, Altanda. That's what I gotta do. Is it okay if I show some of your product parts? Oh, oh, you mean like uh, all those replacement sections for those cool guns behind you? <laughs> yeah. I don't have any of that here. It's at the shop, actually. Well, I know, but I do. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That that there that. You go. That, yeah, that tube came from parts. Our ten parts. Yeah. 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 Wow. Parts. Very cool. Okay, so uh, we're gonna we, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. Obviously, we're gonna be talking AKs. We're gonna be talking about Krebs Customs, most specifically. So uh, hit us up with your questions. We've got lots of people already here in the comment section. Lots of people watching. I want to remind everyone watching. Or actually, I want to ask you to do me a favor right now. Click the like button. Click the like button right now. You know, and also also share this video with your friends and family on social media. Don't forget to share the link of this video so everyone can come on here and hang out with us and ask questions and get to see Mark Krebs live here with us. Um, as well as make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We know YouTube's doing all kind of crazy things to us, unsubscribing people and all of that. So make sure that you're subscribed so you know when this kind of badassery is going down. <laughs> you know. So also make sure that you follow Krebs on all their social media. You guys are on Instagram, right? Yes. Krebs yes. Custom? Yep. Okay, what's your other social media that you guys have? And Facebook. Oh, okay. So Instagram, Facebook. Yes. Uh, you, I know you have a Twitter. We do. We do. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, because there's a, there's a few of us out there that still do Twitter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. I just every once in a while. Yeah. Do you, does Krebs have a YouTube channel? Uh, we do, but we don't post too much stuff. We have some uh, instruction videos there, um, but we'll see. In the yeah, cool. Yeah, I like to I like to go to the um, to manufacturers YouTube channels to watch the instruction stuff since I I know pretty much nothing. And then every time you know, like the the information goes in and out of my brain, so it's nice to have it on your YouTube channel. <laughs> well, we're redoing our our website right now. It's up, but we're kind of tweaking it. And okay. uh, once we get done with that, we're going to start getting more on that just to get people. Well, you show somebody, it's easy. You explain it, it's kind of hard. Yeah, but, absolutely. Know. And if there's anything that we can do to help you guys out, let us know. 
you yeah. know, we'll 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 do we what do. we can to help you to help you out and share stuff and all that. You know, I'd be happy to do it because there's a lot that I don't know, and there's a lot I don't know about guns, and I and I um and there's definitely a not a lot I don't know about AKs, Mark. Well, you, you, yeah, well, you're a, you're a Padawan learner, that's for sure. Yes, yes, yeah. Well, well it won't. Go ahead, Mark. Got to ask to know. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, that's why we have that's why we have guys like you. Do you see yourself as an AK guru? Um, no. No, I I'd, I'd say uh I I do okay, you know. I mean, it's um we try to take serious approach to firearms and think about them in uh real life situations and we try to make our stuff uh not be a weak link you know in a in a proven system okay you know, like right absolutely i think you guys do a pretty good job of that so you know what lola just got in but usually she she has me um like ask you know who are you where did you you know how did you wind up how did you start doing the ak things how, how did you wind up here yeah i was machining um at a place called diecraft metal products long time ago and I had injured my back, and I, I just couldn't take it anymore because, you know, the repetitious movement and stuff. And uh, so we went uh, to California to Laston College, where I took uh, three years of gunsmithing. And then um, we came back here, and I had a gun that I'd semi-automatic 9 millimeter that I'd built from scratch, and we were looking for a shop and we we're going to build this gun and you know we thought nato was going to tool up for a nine millimeter carbine and uh, then uh it ended up just getting a job uh being a gunsmith at, at a place called the marksman when it was uh, still open and um did general gunsmithing for about 10 years, probably worked on about 11,000 guns. Not all of them. Some of them were factory send-ins, but we ended up with about 11,000. And then we did shotgun, custom shotgun for a while, and I built 45s for uh, almost 10 years um, until I just couldn't take it anymore. Uh, <laughs> the, the competitive crowd is... Uh, is a demanding group, whether it be trap or Ipsic or bullseye or any of that, you know, um, it, it's, I've had guys that were getting bullets shot at them that, and I told them it'd be another two weeks and it bummed them out less, <laughs> you know, but, uh, um, it, I wouldn't give up the experience for anything, especially Ipsic because, uh, you get to see a gun shot until it dies. And okay. you know, everybody thinks, oh, hey, I got my pistol, and I'm going to keep this forever, and, and stuff like that. And if you put 40,000 rounds through a year, <laughs> you ain't going to keep it forever, you know? Right. So, so because, um, you know, in my mind, that's interesting, because in my mind, I think, like, you've always been doing AK since you came out the womb, but apparently that that's not where you started, right? No. However, I will say my, my first encounter with him was when I did go to gunsmithing school. I was originally from California, and a good buddy of mine named John Graham, who was a, a smoke jumper, um, he showed me his Vomit M71, which I own to this day. And uh, I was just, I just remember being very... Uh, I just loved it, and uh, I, I went there to build like double rifles and stuff like that. But then uh, my taste changed. Oh, okay, so um, I, I mean, I know that right now you're you guys are in in Illinois, right? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so how long ago was that that you went to gunsmithing school? <laughs> oh, I know I'm not trying. You know, <laughs> I'm not uh, trying to start it trouble. Was, uh, it was probably eighty two. Wow, eighty two. Okay. Yeah, that's not that's not too bad. I still remember those days a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> what? Who was changing your diaper or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Eighty two. Wow. I think I was ten years old. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Yeah. I was actually living in Nigeria back in those days. So um, 
Yeah, I saw I saw a couple of AKs back there. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably not your favorite product at the time. Um, well, you know, um, as a kid, my, my dad was a professor at a university in Nigeria, and it was in the northern part of Nigeria where um, there's a lot of Muslims because basically they control the oil. So we kind of had there was problems there, um, just like there are today. So we had to have guards, bodyguards, and stuff like that. Wow. So I was I was happy, <laughs> you know, when the guns were on my side. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, well, that's typical, actually. Um, yeah. People that don't own them don't want to see them because they're afraid of them, but uh, they want to see them when they're afraid. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, that's that's a, that's a typical left wing. Of yeah. Things. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So you're, you know, you're saying you were in California. Uh, what, what happened? Why'd you give up California? You know, was it, how was it back in those days? Well, it was great. I mean, it's a, it's an awesome state. You know, the, the cities on the coast suck, but the rest of the state is, is a great place. And it, it was, uh, well, you know, kind of breaks my heart that they, got rid of everything I, I liked there. Well, yeah, so so they were they were still relatively gun friendly back in those days, right? Yeah, actually what first got me kind of going was uh, Proposition 5, I think it was, and it was something about handguns or something like that. And that's when I, I really kind of learned about the media and all of that because uh, they, they were going all this and all that and Mm -hmm. I'm different and I, it was like well but that's not true and mm -hmm. I, I just grew up out of the ground you know and uh, right. yeah you know um before speaking of the media let me make sure that i uh mention this because uh folks out there are really liking your microphone man that's like that's right. a that's a sexy microphone that you have going on there you mind sharing with us what it is that's what that is oh yeah. that look at that thing that's beautiful is that um Oh, that's a blue mic. Yeah, that's nice, man. All right, yeah. Are we going to compare mics now or what? Or what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, Mark has Mark Mark has the better mic, so no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, I'm not comparing microphones when someone's it looks got. Like, it looks like the Death Star or something, you know? It's like no, that's that's kind of like a classic. Uh, that's kind of like a classic one. Do you take the credit for that, Mark? Was that your choice? Uh, no, that was. Um, I don't have nearly enough. Uh, knowledge about this stuff uh tom when he was with us and god bless tom um yeah. was uh got all this stuff together and cool and everything and fortunately simon pretty much took over social media and knows how to work all this stuff yeah uh, i am probably not the best at it yeah absolutely uh tom tom was a good guy man really love that guy so um i don't know if you're i don't know if you're ready to talk about that yeah, I'd rather not. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah, man, very good. So you know what? Um, let's. Uh, you guys have questions. Uh, Walter, you got any questions? Um. Yeah, I did. Now I completely forgot what I was going to. Oh. Ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um. You guys are outside of Chicago, right? Yeah, we're uh, about hour north of Chicago. Oh, uh, okay. Because I'm originally from Rockford, back in okay. Long Island. Yeah, Rockford. Not a bad place. Um, it used to be. Now it's kind of, a, as people say, it's full of Mexicans. But um, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> well, no one's going to be the capital. <laughs> yeah, no one's going to misconstrue <laughs> that at all, Walter. Yeah, clean it up. What's clean that? it up, Walter. Clean it up. No what? one's going to misconstrue that at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, uh, it's yeah. changed. It's right. changed a lot from what it used to be. Right. So okay. It used to be, a, used to be a big industrial town and. And lots of good jobs and stuff, and it's not as much anymore. So, um, I mean, Illinois is changing in general. You know, you think about. I used to live. I've been in three different city uh, from 2011 up now, and there's been uh, an escalation of. Um, you know, they completely changed the the safety part of the each city. I was simply by moving. You know, people from south side or east. You know, but I said because I used to live in. Champaign, Illinois, which is close to Urbana, which is a university, it used to be a quiet part of Illinois, very liberal. Actually, the liberalist city around there, and then around there, Decatur, whatever, it's like redneck land. 
Anyhow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and now, now, this, well, now that we need this to piss off every genre, uh, maybe we can move on. To, uh, that's what, yeah, uh, that's what we do. That's what we do here. So, Krebs, uh, Mark, yes. how how did you wind up? I mean, what what was it about Illinois that attracted you, or was it just like you had family there, or how did you wind up there? Yeah, I had to come back and have get a job, and like I said, we searched around for about six months trying to find a shop and stuff like that and that didn't work out and so i started general gunsmithing oh okay so how did that how did that lead into ak's and you know i mean that's what you guys do now well, mostly you do other stuff right you don't just do ak things no i just do ak's only okay uh, so unless we're here on a saturday and i'm farting around with something that that i like post sample in particular yeah so how did you wind up just doing AKs from all the other things that you were doing in the beginning? Well, the gun I told you about that my friend showed me, I ended up owning. And um, we'd go out rabbit hunting in freezing cold weather. I mean, you'd, you'd come back and the gun had frost up and other guns had puke, but mine always ran. And it was kind of the beginning. And then my... Uh, one of my best teachers there, Bob Dunlap, um, was a big fan of the AK, so that kind of helped me move on. And he was a particularly good teacher because he he showed you how to find out stuff. He didn't like teach you doggy tricks, you know, like you know he, he t taught you how to analyze problems and look at function and how the gun works, and then surmise you know uh what's wrong or what's good or whatever you know right okay i understand so you know what let me uh get to some questions because it seems like folks want to know about uh the new stuff that's coming out so should we talk about the new or can you can you talk about anything new that's what that's what that's what these guys want to know yeah so right now um we're we got uh, the sanctions tightened on Russia, and we can't get vapors anymore. Okay. And uh, so, so that means that means that you know, the like these are going to become rare. That they're already not easy to find. So. Right. Yeah. So, so you so with the with the vapor thing, what have you guys? What are you guys going to do about that? Well, right now we're retooling. That's kind of a, one of the headaches of, like I said, dealing with the, all the gun control and crap like that. Um, at least this wasn't an anti-gun move, you know, but uh, we're using uh, WBP Polish parts. Uh, Simon, uh, we sent Simon over to Poland, and uh, um, he uh, met with the guys, and uh, Simon's an impressive guy um and uh very well mannered when he's not being a total are we talking about simon sitting next to you <laughs> oh, man, i don't know <laughs> i'm telling you because <laughs> he looks so sweet and innocent oh, I know. it's got the pepsi dent smile and a twisted brain <laughs> oh <laughs> I wonder. I wonder where he got that from, Mark. <laughs> He's, hey, you can't rub that much off on somebody. <laughs> you have some on your own, you know. <laughs> right. Okay. So you're going to be using, and and then what is that? You said you. So you're going to be. You, the guns are going to be based off of a Polish. Yeah. The the all they're all brand new uh, WBP parts, uh, which they make parts for Radom, and uh, you know they're a serious player and. Uh, and then we kind of double checked them too. We sent all their parts out to uh, get hardness tested. Um, okay. And uh, man, they came up singing. Okay, cool. All okay. So what? Um, you know, I'm I'm assuming then that there's differences with that and the Vepper, or are they close? Um, no. Well, the the Vepper's built based on an RPK or the heavier uh, Trunnion and receiver body uh which is the you know their squad auto or light machine gun right mm -hmm. and uh these actually will uh the, they'll be a lot lighter um 
And cool. I, I like I like the one millimeter receivers. Uh, the gun's just a lot lighter. Um, heavy guns have good uh, properties and uh, all of that, but I personally prefer the lighter ones. Yeah, but, that's not a bad thing. I'm sure guys out there want to go lighter and stuff like that. You know, um, are you going to be doing some some pistol versions? You know, utilizing that uh, sig brace oh, yeah, and sorry. other braces out there. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, no, there's, there's, there are people asking about that. So. Right. No, we, we are going to be making, um, we're starting out with a batch of 50 pistols. Uh, some of those will be sold just as pistols, and then others will have arm braces. Am I supposed to be looking at you or the little thing on the side? Uh, yeah, you can oh. look You can look anywhere. It's all good. Okay. Yeah, either, yeah, either way, either one. You're doing good. You're doing good, you know. Um, yeah, so there are going to be some of those. When when can we? Like, how many things are going to be in the new line? Is it just going to be two things, or you know, is there going to well, be anything else? Well, there's one else? that we're doing, and then one we can't tell you about. Oh, okay. All right. I know. You're I, not, I, ready, not ready to release it yet. Right. And okay. uh, but <laughs> we'll make sure that we show you. Yeah. Now, can I ask you? Does Eltenda know what it is? Don't think so. No, um, it's been, it's been sworn to secrecy. Oh, because oh, oh. <laughs> I was just saying, you know, we could torture him or something like that. I, I don't know anything. If I wasn't like there, I was sleeping. So, <laughs> no, we're not going to do. That. We're not going to torture. We're not going to torture him. How soon? Um, this uh, so this uh, secret thing that's coming out. How soon can we look forward to hearing about it? Yeah, I'm hoping about six months. Okay, six months. Okay, so probably be about eight. You know. Uh, All right, things. cool. So in the meanwhile, what are the things that we have to look forward to? Well, we're going to be making the AC-15 rifle, and then we're going to be making the AC-15 pistols, pretty much. Okay, cool. Do you guys have anything like that there that you could show us? Yeah, and we also have a, our second to last batch of Vepers. Um, oh, oh, wait. So there's there's still Vepers. There is. The right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's you know what let's start there because that's that's kind of really important here because um, the 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 vepers like after this batch of vepers that you have there's not going to be any more right right they're yeah they're gone oh, okay so I mean, um, we could buy some more but we'd be smarter to tool up and, and work on something that we know we can get yeah. right so so for fans so for people out there that have been maybe waiting. Or they're into Krebs customs. This would probably be a good time to, you know, try to get your hands on those. Otherwise, because the the Vepers are going to go away after this from Krebs, at least for now. Right. Um, we made a different model. Uh, it's a speed load version, um, and uh, we we've got a new mag release for the sweeping. We eliminated the ejection spring. Oh, cool. And, uh, it's got an extra long. Yeah, I think I think Eltenda was talking about this on the show because he's got the prototype apparently. Yes, is that right. true? Yeah, okay, he's got one of the, the <laughs> right one one of the first ideas about it, and this is all machined, and it's kind of funny because it's all machined to be like a stamping, but uh, to keep it as light as possible. But uh, it's yeah. Can we? Can you? Yeah. Can we? Uh, can we get? Can we hold that up so we can see that? So this is so the so there you go. Okay, yeah. Um, the Magwell reminds me of an FAL Magwell. Um, that's a good assumption there. Um, it was kind of funny though. I'd, I'd like to say I was smart enough to just think about that, but uh, <laughs> I tried it with both sides being a funnel and all of that, and then I realized that hinge in magazines just work different and uh i looked at the fal and i go crap that was just sitting there in front of me the whole time you know but um in fact i i had one gun builder get on my ass about making these and saying how silly they were and uh the guy built fns for a living and i i thought it was kind of funny that yeah that's kind of ironic <laughs> so that's it so that's easy in right so you don't you don't have like a, a tough rock in or anything like that right no you you get these things um one thing, 
they work well. They okay, work. yeah. I mean, just for just to show guys, like, uh, so so here I've got. I've got what we would now consider the classic, not older, the classic version here. So that that needs a rock in in order for you to get it done. Not something like I usually have to look in order to do it. So you're saying that now, if uh, if we can get the rock in from that, yeah, yeah lots. Of your, your index and you're on it. You know, okay. and we don't really think either one of them negate each other because some people love drums. Um, I'm not a big fan of them. They've never actually been used in combat much, you know, um, usually kind of go by the wayside for, uh, stick magazines. Okay. So, uh, oh, so the, uh, the new, the new ones really will not be able to do drums then you're saying? No, you can, if you have a, a speed load flange, you cannot put a drum in. Oh, okay. Now can the, um, can the, so is, what do we call, what are you calling those mod three? Or just it's still mod two, but with mod two SL. Yeah, mod two SL. Mod two SL. Okay. So can you um, upgrade a mod three to that or no? Uh, or I'm sorry, a mod two. So a regular mod two. Can you upgrade it to that new? It would be expensive deal. It would be expensive. Well, okay. Well, one of the the most uh, time consuming processes that we have. Uh, believe it or not, is uh, refinishing and assembly. Okay. They take a long time to do and not scratch stuff and, you know, keep it nice. Yeah, because you've, you've got your own special paint job that you put on there, right? Right, yeah. It's a synthetic alkyd kind of. It's impervious to solvents and stuff. Uh, yeah, I suppose if you soaked it in a bucket of acetone overnight, you could probably scrape off the finish, but other than that... It's pretty tough. Okay, so is the so what's the uh, price yeah. of the um, SL going to be, or what is it? Uh, it's um, I think it's twenty one uh, sixty somewhere around. Yeah, twenty one sixty. Okay, and and you and you have them available right now for folks out there who you know. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we've uh, yeah, we, we we've finished all the veppers we have. Okay, yeah. So uh, the soul version, uh, like last week, uh, put it on our website. So if you guys want to check it out, it's on our website. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be people out there that are going to balk at it because of the price of it. I think the thing that people have to realize is that if you got one of these, if you can get a Vepa right now and then do all the work that goes into this yourself, then you're pretty amazing. Yep. Because <laughs> it's well, not I, easy. I will say, um, I will toot horn here for a little bit. Uh, through any of the tight spots, we have not raised the price of our rifles. Mm -hmm. No gouging because of government interference, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, and this is something I'm just, you know, I'm telling you guys, uh, Krebs hasn't like paid me to say this or anything. I think if you're looking for a really nice AK, a high end AK, that this is something you want to seriously consider with the, you know, it's going to be worth the value. Obviously, people are going to, you know, say, hey, I can get an AK for seven, eight hundred bucks. But to get your AK up to snuff like this is going to cost a lot more than that. What do you say about that, El Tender? You own it. Oh, yeah, I mean, and it's the only AK that I know on the market. If you're lucky enough that you can own a can, can mm -hmm. you can with that, with that uh, what's it called? IMS, right? The name, right? Yeah, that, with that, with that feature, you can pretty much uh, swap, you know, remove the break, uh, the break if you want to call it like that, and just slap on it your uh, your can. And now uh, they make a new one, a titanium one, I saw a new. A are new are you talking about like you could do something like this, Altanda? Yeah, thank you. Very, very kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put a suppressor. This is the achaotic for anyone who wants to know. So you, yeah. um, Krebs and Liberty got together and set up your uh, muzzle devices so that you can put lots of different things on there, right? Yeah, um, we've got a, two different titanium muzzle brakes, the long and the short. Seems like the long one's the one that's selling. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the bird cage on it, which. Uh, is basically a compensator and it it cuts down on the noise quite a bit too yeah we've done we've done a video on that i think i forgot to bring that in today but we we have a video on the titanium it, it'll keep it shooting flat 
Um, I, I was actually a little surprised by how effective it was. Okay, very cool. So, you know, just to like uh, section this off, there are, you know, there are some um, the, the VEPR versions out there for for interested collectors and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's a good thing to know, right? Um, so now what's coming up in the new line that we could take a look at? Well, that's basically what we're going to be doing a, a speed load AC and AC 15, kind of like how we're doing the, uh, the, uh, the KV 13 and the KV 13 mod two SL, you mm -hmm. know, or the mod okay. two and the mod two SL. And, um, then we're slipping into, um, a different project uh we'll st though we will keep making these guns um we like the guns and people seem to like them and uh unless our new thing just blows everything out of the water we will keep making them oh, okay cool yeah the new thing that we don't know anything about <laughs> well i <laughs> do that to you but i mean oh, I, I understand no we're going to see something i mean uh it's uh, I don't see like an expensive. I think it's an investment. You know that you mm -hmm. get, let's put it in this way. You get to the point you shoot one of these or one of Mark or Jim, whatever either company. I mean, I like Mark one a little better because they put a little bit more new stuff on it. Either of the two, when you shoot one of those and then you go back to your water or whatever, you you are at the point like, what the fuck I'm doing with this? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's uh, you know. But uh, that being said, they they make also, if I can say that, I don't want to interrupt you guys. They make also a bunch of parts. They they can make your AK if you can't afford one, like one of the AK. You can make your AK in a in a better platform. I mean, they got safety stock adapters, deep sights. I mean, you can turn one AK, one regular AK if you can afford one of them for now. There's for now in a, in a better platform. I mean, it's it's easy stuff. Doesn't require like a a guns made or anything, you know, you got stock adapters for all kind of AKs. They got a peep side, which are amazing for all people like me. Uh, the safety, I think, is the best. I mean, I have, I've been using Mark, your safety, I believe it's like since 2011, I think. The first type, I think, was 11 or 12. The first type, I still have the, the first type on my Wozer. I mean, I love them, especially, like, for example, the safety. If you go on one of those Nazi ranges, they, they want you to keep the bolt open. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah. That's the best thing you can get. I mean, it's. I, I mean, I mean, it's. In, and like I said, I honestly, I, I and I said, and not because I'm friendly with Mark and Simon, but since I bought mine, I don't have a single regret about spending the money on anything. I love this thing. I wish that the, the ammo were more available because mine is a 545, of course. Oh, thing every single day of the week. I mean, excuse us. You on top of everything, getting the prototype, you also have the AK74 version. Of course. The real AK guys like the 70, right, Mark? We the real yeah, AK like, like the 545 still. So. Yeah. So do you do you um are, do you guys have any of those or you're not really because of the ammo situation you guys really aren't making those, Mark? No, we got them. Oh, you got them. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's pretty cool. You can get, you can get ammo for them all over the place. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, it's not surplus ammo uh, as much. But, it's good stuff. You know, we're also making the safety now without the notch after uh, years of people asking uh, for one without the hole in it. Yeah, or some people like that because they want it to be the, you know, they don't want to change the uh, manual of operation of it, right? They want it the way every AK that they're used to to run, right? Well, I don't know. I, I think maybe they're worried about dirt getting in it. Um, it's hard to say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's a you bunch know, of different some, reasons. Some people just like what they like too. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And and it's legal. You know. Yeah. The good thing is they have the options. They have the options there. Okay. So let me uh, let me try to hit up some questions here. Um, uh, someone wants to know what your thoughts are on the Mac ninety and have you ever customized any of those? Oh yeah, we did. A, done <laughs> of them over the years i mean mm -hmm. way back you know because we were actually we were putting ak mags and sks's before they came over from china um we were messing around with them i was still in general gunsmithing but i i played with them all over the place and they're, they're not bad guns they really aren't a lot of people poo poo them 
Mm -hmm. I don't think they're quite as accurate as the European guns, but um, always work. They run, man. They always they work. I've never had a Mac 90 that didn't work out of the box. Like I've got other Wassers and stuff that you got to mess with to make them work. You know? Right. No, they they um, their attention to detail could be a little better, but you know they're. <laughs> So good. what's the thing about the Mac 90 that people like versus what, you know, what is it they dislike? So, you know, for, for laymen that don't really know all the well, differences it's here. Well, got a little bit, the AK's got a, or the European AK's got like a 900 uh, uh, bore size in the trunnion for like uh, AK's, 905, 906. Um and then they taper down like a regular gun, which gives the gun a little bit more support. The the Mac 90 barrel is about three quarters of an inch in diameter, all the way back through into the receiver, right. and okay. then tapers out. It's just, uh, but it's really not. Um, I, I can't say that it. Outside of the thickness, there's really nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're definitely durable AKs, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if you see a lot of those out there nowadays, do you? No, they're out there. Yeah, they're, out there? They're, 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 they're like a couple of grains, I think. Right. Okay. Because those are Norinkos, right? Uh, they got Norinko, Polytech. It's the other one, Polytech, right? The other one, I think. Yeah, Polytech is Polytech just upscale Norinko. That's all that was. Oh, it's, all, okay. it's, all, it's, all, it's all the same organization in China. There's only there's only one gun manufacturer in China. <laughs> the government well, the military one is North North uh -huh. China Industry. Da, 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 da. Yeah, Norinco. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Whether they're making AKs or they're making rockets, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so um, I don't, I'm not sure who asked this question, but they want to know your thoughts on the PSA AK and it being the only good American-made AK. <laughs> I don't know where that. <laughs> I'm not um, sure who said what's going on there. PSA. Well, I you know, um, boy, I you know, I'd like to answer everybody's questions, but I, I yeah. don't want to talk about other people's guns. Yeah, I, uh, that gets a little. Yeah, yeah. I guess I yeah. You know, we can get into a little thing here about like knocking the other guys. You don't you don't not get along with people, right? You get along with all the different companies. Yeah, out I there. try to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, there's no point in fighting. Yeah. So there you go. So the answer to that, I'm not sure who asked that question. You can, uh, you know, you can come. You can always come in here and reframe it or whatever. But, um, you know, at this point, Mark doesn't want to try to like go after, you know, make anyone else look bad or anything like that. You know, so. You know, one thing I think about people reminisce about the Mac ninety, back in the day, it was C H E A P, cheap. Yep. <laughs> and, th yeah. and, th and well. things aren't and things aren't so much that way now. Um, even the even the inexpensive guns are not really. Yeah. No, they were like 250 bucks with yeah. four magazines, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Can't beat that. And you could nope. go pick up, you could get, you get a thousand rounds of ammo for a hundred bucks, you know, and, yep. and blast all day long if you wanted to. So, you know. Yeah. Okay. So I think Lola's telling me that that question, that question came from uh, Tango Hunter. So here's another question from him to make up for that one. Uh, exp can you explain the accuracy of the peep sight? Some people claim it has like extended, um, like or at extended distances, they're not as accurate. So, well, it, it that's true. It's it's a uh, it's a fast acquisition site, and when you have fast acquisition site, you suffer a little bit of pinpoint accuracy. Even though I will say, I you know, once you get used to a peep sight, you can you can drill them in there. Yep. Um, and uh, basically, when you're looking through a peep, it helps you focus on the front sight, and um, it's just a little bit quicker is all. We also have the fast acquisition sight, you okay. know, which is a wider notch. But anytime you do that, you give up a little bit in, in accuracy for speed. Yeah. So while we're on the, you know, while we're on this, I'll, you know, definitely I'll start with Mark, but anyone else could jump in. What what should we be thinking? There's always a debate about this. What's the effective range of an AK? Or what should we be thinking in our minds when we're preparing for this and thinking about sights and optics and training and all that kind of stuff? 
Well, you should zero at 300. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, and which is just happens to be the battle zero. And what happens is your your line of sight and line of bore intersect at you know seventy five feet or so, and then come back down into it, um, or I more than seventy five feet. But you know the the arc of the bullet goes first below, then at a closer range it's right on, then it goes above it, then it goes back down into the three hundred. And that way, if you shoot something close, you're on or, you know, plus or minus an inch or so on, on uh, center of mass, you know. And then um, at 300 yards, you're in two. Oh, okay. That's never interesting. Quite, I never, I never well, thought that that was where you should be zeroing it. The, the, rear, sli the rear slide on a, or the slide on the AK site. If mm -hmm. you take it off 100 and pull it to the rear, that is a 300-yard target, or that that elevates the sight the same height as if you slide it to 300. Okay. And, yeah. That's, so uh, that's what if? So what if uh, folks out there that are you know into AKs don't have that distance um, in order to zero it? You don't necessarily. I mean, you know, if you're going to a range. You're limited to whatever distance they have, right? Right. Um, yeah. If you're going out in the desert or something, you could you could do whatever you want to do. Or if you've got a farm or something like that with 300 yards. There's a. Um, well, I can give you the name later. I'm, I'm I'm at a loss now, but they make targets that you can zero uh -huh. at, like uh, I think it's uh, 75 feet, and mm -hmm. that'll get you on at 100. Okay. Okay. You know. That's cool. Uh, okay. All right. So cool. Uh, let me um, let me see what else is in here. Um, Altenda, you got anything? Oh, no, I wanted to mention. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Walter. I wanted to mention something about this current, uh, the the whole ban, or the stopping of the importation of the of the rifles. You okay. You really know that the market is slow when you can still get those and you can still buy them and, and consumers can still buy them back in the old days when they banned something and it was crazy out two days three days everything was gone oh yeah everything was picked up everything was gone and you mm -hmm. can still buy a um or whatever you know, a vepper i'm surprised yeah. i mean like an honest version probably but because in the old days that didn't happen when it was crazy busy it was gone. I mean, they people, their credit cards came out and they were buying like crazy, you know. So that yeah. shows you. I mean, especially when you're talking about your higher end things too, because guys knew like this is an investment. Yeah. You know, when people when people paid three hundred dollars for a stripped receiver. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I've never seen it. You know, it's it's I've never seen things get something get stopped the importation and it's still available. A month and I know some shipments probably came in after the ban um, yeah. or the or the but um still I mean it's still you can still go out and buy a shotgun mm -hmm. I bought my I bought my I bought a rifle of a, a Vepper Hank knows about it. I bought a 308 um, okay. afterwards and I was still surprised I could get that a few days afterwards but they were available so I mean, especially the sporterized one the sp sporterized ones they're probably easier to find because I know that uh, Circle 10 AK uh, have a bunch of had some some vaporing stock. They were like ca weird calibers, like five five six. Uh, there were a couple of four tens, I think. Yeah, that, maybe some three oh eight. The day, that, the, day the, Sorry, day I, the day that I bought mine, I bought it from Centerfire. They had okay. they had seven six two gun eight guns, and I picked the three oh eight because I got plenty of seven six two eight Ks. But um, and and I've been wanting to buy a Vepper forever, and I just never pulled the trigger on it. And so now I. I mean, I, so now yeah, I, I just got a thirty six. <laughs> go, go, what was that, Mark? I just got a thirty out six from uh, Circle Ten, actually. Okay. So what? What do you guys? What do you guys? Do, um, as far as accessories for the three hundred eight, are they pretty much the same as the accessories for the? As far as stocks and things like that, or are there ones that are longer or shorter, or what's the? For the three hundred eight. No, I'd say everything pretty much um, fits all the veppers. Um, 
except for the ones that uh, Legion brought in. Um, what is the name of that model? The FBK or uh, oh, the uh, are, you, are you talking about the, the ones with, with the four end flange? Um, oh, the the, the, the new Vepers. We we just that's actually fine. that's fine. Group. Oh, that that's cool. That's um, fine. FM 11 or whatever it's called. I don't think we have it here, or maybe we do. Um, but it's the one that's kind of already converted. Yeah, it's the one um, we're. Uh, so people call it the Fine Vepper. Okay, and uh, we're making four. We've got four ends for those um, now. We've made. Um, there's there's one way in the back that's two two three. I would, uh, I would love to just be there in that shop with you right now. It's like a button. Oh. You call it the, the, the Alibaba. And then they, you know, yeah, like, I mean, you guys probably think like, man, now we got to go find this thing. I would be happy happy to volunteer to go back there and go look for that. Um, this is the gun we're talking about. Um, and uh, we've got a foreign that will cover this. And oh. uh, because of the, the Navy test, uh, we're making M-Lock now also and oh cool batch of these so are, that's so uh, that's the that's the fine f-i-n-e with m oh fine okay fine yeah. okay is that the one the latest one they are imported the, the latest the one you would see after short show that's another thing remember after short show there was a bunch of vapor they were available for i don't know that's the same one right uh, there's some more candy. Oh, so that's from the fine. That's from the fine group. Oh my goodness. Uh oh. Uh oh. I was looking. I was looking at. Uh, I was trying to look that up. I was trying to look up the fine. So it's F I M E for anyone that's looking. But uh, something juicy just came out of the safe with Simon. Yeah. Uh, Did I, I, you, uh, go ahead. Show it. Show it to us, Simon. What do you What do you have there? Oh, since you guys are so jealous, I thought I might make you more jealous. It's the uh, FN two forty nine, CCW, <laughs> and uh, uh, Mark's uh, truck gun. Sorry, I'm so stinky. It's a concealed carry gun. That'll do. It's for when uh, Mark goes downtown Chicago. You know, right? <laughs> That's pretty nice. Where you? Hey, where, oh, okay. I guess someone's going to put it back. So, is that full auto, Mark? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got the the parts for it and uh, converted it. And oh, cool! There's a reason why. Let, this I know this is like a little bit of a, a side thing from um, from talking about AKs for a second, but I don't think anyone's gonna be mad at us for si going to the side and talking about this for a second since you have it here. And we've got a bunch of people. I just want to remind everyone: click the like button and share this so we can let everyone know that we're talking about all these badass guns, including the M249. Now, how did you guys do the conversion? That's what I'm really interested in. Um, well, we bought the, the trigger pack and the bolt carrier, and we got them registered, and uh, then put them in. Okay. Uh, cool. We don't have to machine it to... Okay. They a, they've, they've got a denial block inside there or something. Yeah, right. yeah, there's, yeah. You can't just put in full auto yeah. part. There, there, there's a reason why I want to know, Mark. So. Spit it oh, out. Okay. There's actually a reason why I want to know about this. Spit it out. <laughs> Because, you know, like I, I got, you know, I got a couple of things here, too. So now this is, this well, is, you, a, you don't got it. Yeah, but uh, ours got an IMS on the end. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, obviously, this is why I want to ask you about it since you're here and you're a very knowledgeable guy about this stuff. Uh, Big Daddy Guns has this one in here, and we actually want to make it go full auto. And I think we've got a couple of things missing. I think they don't know specifically what machining they're supposed to do. So I was wondering if you can help us out with that. Obviously, they've got the, uh, you know, the manufacturers, FFL, and all that kind of good stuff that they need. They just need the, to know exactly what we have to do to make this go full auto. Oh, yeah. I, I can definitely tell them. Oh, sweet. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to hit you up about that. But plus, you know, I, I figured I had to, because Simon went and right got something said, badass. Huh? You know, saying my gun was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. No, so, hey, Simon got it out, so I couldn't, you know, I couldn't hey. not take mine out. 
Yeah. I'm trying to clean that up. I'm trying to clean this up as much as I possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know what's going to happen? Now Simon's going to go back to the safe and get something else out. <laughs> And I'm definitely not going to be able to keep up with that. Okay, so where were we? we what were we talking about? We were talking about um, peppers, I think. <laughs> he was talking about the Legion shotguns. Um, oh, the, the Legion, uh, yeah. Yeah, and we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're holding a few out. These things, um, we're gonna try to make the rail for the shotguns too, which Simon has been telling me is is just absolute imperative, even though he happens to own one. What's that? Oh, <laughs> Yo, it's a bit <laughs> uh, uh, foreign. Uh, the oh, yeah, Leopard yeah, yeah. 12th. Yeah. 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 Like, Not that many, he doesn't uh, care if we rot, you know. It's yeah, just, exactly. So Simon does it. He didn't do the market research. The market research is Simon. I get told that by my son, too. Like, why Why do you want to make that? You want you to make something, you know? And that's like, because I want to. That's why. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, listen. You got. You do have to make some money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah in order course. to keep doing. Well, in order to keep doing the thing. So. So true. the good thing about this is you guys make accessories for a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Um. And all but um, the IMS for an AK, if you're setting it up for a suppressor, uh, requires gunsmithing. Uh, but other than that, none of our parts are uh, something that you cannot install at home. Right. Yeah. You know. So now, just to just to uh, make the segue, since I've got you on here, I just want to show you something. We were talking about AK-74. This is actually my AK-74 right here. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually been meaning to send this to you guys because um, I I love this gun, man. This is awesome. A bullpup, obviously. You know, great. It's a great gun, but the, my problem is right up here. You know, right. it's got, I've got this cheap, uh, you know, True Glow optic and everything. But you know, you see that kind of like moves. I don't like that. I was wondering if this possible. Like, what would I do? I have to have something custom made in order to change this and put something metal up here that would be more reliable. What do you think about that? Um. Yeah, I, I would say. Okay. Uh, is that an off-the-shelf kind of thing, or do I have to like? send it to you guys what do I have to do I'm just trying to think of how I could make this this would actually be a good place for um, the uh, what the hell is that scope mount Ultimax yeah Ultimax, right. Ultimax, yeah. Uh, for that because you're not putting your hand right there you know okay uh, you got your cheek you know it's it's that'd be a perfect place that actually wouldn't be a bad idea for that. I mean, oh, okay. So the Ultimac will will actually fit right here. Yeah, I believe it will. Yeah, it, okay. it, replaces, it replaces the standard gas tube. Yeah, you just light oh. it. You no, know, it's easy. Like ten minutes. I I, I have in all my AK, well, except for yeah. Okay. And you co uh, the cool feature is you co witness your red dot too. Oh, okay, cool. So I have to okay, I have to get one of those. And you guys obviously have those available, right? What uh, Ultramax rails? Yeah. No. Oh, you don't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That, uh, okay. Oh, there's like that's something that someone else makes. Right. Right. Okay. All right. I'll look into that. Okay. So what other what a uh? I got one. I can send you. Oh, okay. Cool. El Tenda. Now I know you did a you did a, an interview with El Tenda. We were talking about actually I think last week or something. Yeah, you did, you did a pretty cool video. I invite everyone to go check out El Tenda Fabrizio on YouTube to take yeah. a look at that. Yeah, so I think, he was, I think he was asking you about your favorite guns, and you had some real interesting um, responses in there. Do you, do you have all those guns you were talking about? Uh, um, no. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, he's got all of those. You can't own them all unless you have huge industry or something like that. You know what? Um, if you'll excuse me for just a moment, okay. uh, I, uh, my mom's fallen down and she can't get up and I'm going to help her up. <laughs> real quick. Okay. All right. Okay. No, I understand. Okay. I get it. All okay. right. Cool. So, uh, El Tenda, mm -hmm. what do you got? I don't know. I mean, the, the interview was interesting. We asked him the five most underrated design 
which was interesting. Mark came up with some stuff that I was looking at, like, did you ever saw one of those? Some of them are like common, like a Mini 14, the Tech 9, where gun that I remember since I was a kid. I mean, the 80s, you know. Um, but some other one I have to go online when I went when I come, went back home because I'm like, I don't know a clue how that gun look like. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually, um, I was agree with all of them. The one I was actually mostly agree was actually the, <clears throat> sorry, the, SM, M, the SMLE or, or Lee Infield, which is a really good rifle, underrated rifle. I mean, the British use it for, for a long time, and they have and the the, the, the um, in Afghanistan was still the, the Taliban was still using it and making it actually in the little shops. They were actually, I believe, they were making the Mark One or Mark Two. We uh, the, the, made. I'm talking about handmade. Yeah, the the CIA when that whole thing started with the Russians, they scoured the planet trying to find uh, Enfield rifles to supply the the uh, the Mujahideen with mm -hmm. back then, and they worked great because they could shoot a long distance and you know. Oh yeah, it's a like we took it with mine. It's a, it's a pretty effective round, and thank God you can find them. You can find them nowadays, uh, even regular ammo. You know, even surplus. I believe. Uh, uh, what's a Yugo company? Well, I don't remember. Pretty, pretty, pretty partisan. They make ammo for that. They make ammo, so you can actually. Find. I was always born to buy one. Actually, the one I like is the jungle one. Is it called M yeah. MK Five? It's hard to find. It's hard oh, to find a real one. Yeah. 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 The jungle. That's the one I like more. Most of them. All oh, the old school one. The very, very first ones or two, which are the original one. The bayonet is impressive too. The bayonet is pretty impressive too. And the World War One style bayonets, very friendly, you know. Yeah, I thought that was. Go ahead, Mark. Well, every one I've ever seen has had. You know, that came. Like I said, it was the AK-47 of bolt actions. You know, mm -hmm. had about seven thousand head space. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, or more. I mean, man, them things are like I looked at them and I'm going, these things are junk. But if you actually start operating them, they mm -hmm. are the fastest shooting bolt action happening. But so it's just <laughs> wide open for, for, for the same time there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So for for us uh, novices here, that like it, it, that was like a big wide open headspace. Yes. Right. I'm sorry. That headspace is distance between the bolt and the case head or the back end of the cartridge case and on most guns you know it's uh five thousandths head space and this will be up to like 14 um i've seen them at fourteen thousandths head space wow okay so are those uh are those guns difficult to get or easy to get nowadays or somewhere in the middle somewhere in the middle now you used to have to trip over them to get anywhere but you know the day of the $75 bolt action is yeah. drifting away. Yeah. It's like they equal to the price. If you think about it, it's like Mausers, you know, depend on Mauser you can find, which I like too. Uh, you can find any, you know, depend which one you want. If you find a Chilean Mauser is not comparable to whatever, you know, like, uh, I don't know, now I gotta come up with something, but <laughs> another South American contract. Most of, for example, the South American contract were actually uh, follow up that the German guys, so they, they they're actually pretty good rifle. The, the Lee Infield, um, I, how many people made them? England, India, uh, Canada probably. Yeah. And I don't know who else. I don't. Even, I don't. I don't. I can't remember who else made it. But they were pretty. I mean, all the Commonwealth nation were using it. Mm -hmm. They might have a different machine gun, but as far rifle, they were pretty much. Yeah. Uh, when you, you, so do yeah. any? Do you have a Lee Enfield, Mark? I'm sorry. Do you have? Uh, do you have any of those? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> how about <laughs> how about you, Walter? You got one? You do? Okay. Uh, we you got to talk so that we can actually. See oh, I know you. that. I'm not, I just don't want to. You know. I, oh, I, no. No. I, 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 I try to. I try to get like. One, I don't have one of each of the Enfields. I have one Enfield. But mm -hmm. if you know how to work the bolt and pull the trigger, that mm -hmm. thing runs like a freaking some. It'll sound semi-automatic if you know how to work it. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. When's the last time you shot that thing? Uh, actually, it was in um, February up at my dad's place. Oh, okay, cool. So we, we had to do something on that then. Anyway, I, I took some British friends out, and they were they were busting caps with the Enfield. They don't get to do oh. them at home. Yeah, so that's <laughs> ironic. Like the British, so the British guys came to America. It's sad. <laughs> it's we always that's number one request. We have to go shooting, and we shoot 
They yeah. shoot guns and whatever. I bring all kinds of stuff yeah. out. But here's the here's the question: What happens to us here in America when we don't have these things? Where do we go? <laughs> We're not going to be able to go anywhere to shoot them. <laughs> well, we we'll up for our rights and keep them. Yeah, you absolutely. Don't, don't know about, I don't know about you, but I'm always going to have mine. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. They like whether they like it or not, they can piss up a pole. Yeah. Right. Right, right, absolutely. I'm with you on that one. Okay, so here's a here's a question mark that you probably never ever get. You probably never get this question. Uh, can you explain the difference between milled and stamped, and does it matter to you? What do you think about that? I'm sure no one ever asked you that. Nope. No. Uh, well, <laughs> the um, the milled receivers are real nice, clean receiver. Um, they function every bit as good as a stamped, or vice versa. Um, the only thing that I don't particularly like about them is they're, they're heavy, you know, um, and when you got an AK-47 barrel in there and all that, which is a bit heavier profile, it's just, um, more weight than you need necessarily, you know, um, and actually Russian statistics say that the stamp receiver will actually outlive the, uh, the machine oh really okay so and so that's why like you guys don't do the milled obviously then or you know you have no intention no, we to... would um mm -hmm. we right now we're uh, actually right now we're working on a project with sharps uh and um we're making six point we're making some 6.5 rifles and he's done specific dimension changes and different oh. things on his receiver uh for us and uh, he's been very patient, and uh, we'll probably have that the first one out, but it's going to John um, mm -hmm. uh, in about three weeks. Okay, cool. So that's Sharp Rifle, Sharp's Rifle Company. Right. Now, these are in prototype. We're doing four of them for proof of concept. We've got two that, that shoot great. Um, they're both... Uh, sub half minute guns um and uh, uh we got to make sure that they all work you know because yeah. you can't mm -hmm. sell a, a, an expensive rifle like that um and not have it not print you know either it prints or it doesn't you know? right okay yeah so you know i think that um we've we've tested actually walter and i we've done some testing on that round that um you know, John sent us out some things to uh, test for them. It's, it's actually pretty cool. I know there's lots of different rounds out there now, lots of competition in the space, right? You know, guys looking for, you know, what's the next hot round? Yeah. You know. it, it's a good round. Uh, it, it almost defies physics. Its ballistic coefficient is so good that it outpenetrates uh, 308 at 1,000 yards. Um. And what what's weird about it is is the the thing weighs the same and goes as fast. It's the bullet shape and diameter that help it cruise through the air like it does. Well, Hank, yeah. are, you, are you talking about the the sharps that twenty five caliber thing, or rather, are we not talking about the same thing? Are we? Uh, Six eight sharp, SMC is They make AR fifteen receivers, and they've come out with a. Uh, with an AK receiver now. Okay, but what was the round? What was the round? I think that's what Walter's trying to. Oh, I'm sorry, 6.5. 6.5. 6.5. Oh, okay. So that's, the, it's the same sharps, I guess, we're talking about then. Yeah. Um, no, wait, that, that might be something. Okay, I see what you're saying, Walter. Yeah, I think we were testing the, what was it, the 22.45? Yeah, 25. Yeah. yeah, you're talking about the, like the 6.5, like a 6.5 Creedmoor? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah i'm not no but no uh, well, oh okay so what were you talking about mark <laughs> oh you were talking about the grendel okay all right, all right. yeah let's just yeah, yeah grendel, it yeah, could yeah. get a little confusing in right. here we got, we got two different companies crossed here or something yeah no it's the same company it's sharp oh. rifles company or um yeah. Yeah. All those or something like that. oh no we're talking about two totally different companies you're right let say yeah. sharps Sharps, those guys that we're yeah. talking about, Hank, don't make AK receivers. I don't yeah, know. so you're talking about Sharps Brothers. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. With, uh, 
Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was right, but yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. See how that can crossed. get that can get confusing real fast. Wires crossed. Yeah. 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 It's uh, we're talking Sharps Brothers, not Sharps Rifle Company. So there you go. So right. they're the ones that make uh, the uh, custom AR-15, AR-10, and AK. Right, and the jack yeah. receiver. And right. Okay. Okay. Right. Good. Good one. Okay. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking of. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Oh, you, right? you are okay, El Tenda. Thanks, man. The way my wife is gonna kill me is the only day off we got together. So okay, okay. I mean, Take I'm gonna see my son probably. Say hi. Sorry? Say hi. To, say hi to the wife from all of us. <laughs> and it wasn't Hank's uh, fault. It wasn't Hank's fault, really. Yeah. Don't blame me. Blame Mark. Blame Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see them soon, actually. Well, actually, we <laughs> the nine we're gonna see each other. Right, he might, actually, he might walk in here in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. I wish I can. I don't see. I got a good relationship right now, actually. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, right? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I sleep in the shop. Don't tell anybody. I just got fired. My wife kicked me out, so I I, I sleep over there. For the night. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, man. Thanks. Thanks for joining Thank you us. Much. All right. Take it easy, buddy. Peace. Stay brother. safe. Have a good night. See you. Yeah. See you. Okay. So I guess uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Kevin Dufresne wants to know, Mark, do you guys have any plans for a bullpup AK? What do you think about that? Um, I, I'm a little mixed on that. I, I um, start going for it sometimes. Um, I've had a few ideas, but bullpups kind of uh, – I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't like don't but, around I, the bush. I, uh, <laughs> but there's a place for them, and I, uh, I I should probably start. I've had a few ideas about it. Um, one of the things that that I don't like about them is the length of pull, um, or that is the pistol grip to your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Um, you're pretty much forced to carry them straight down like special forces guys going in a, in a, you know, to breach a building or something like that. And, uh, um, I like to snap shoot, um, from the, you know, high ready and it, it's, uh, I feel like it's faster if you're just walking along, um, and you're not, you don't have friends in front of you that you're, you know worried about shooting right okay. i mean there, there's definitely reasons for them uh so i will say that um it, it's something we might do I, I i can't rule it out i don't have any intense plans to go ahead and do it right away though yeah okay so that's a good way to clean it up i mean you only broke my heart and then you know kevin's heart and He'll be all yeah. right. <laughs> that's that's okay He'll be okay well, I, get over it i mean it's like uh <laughs> If you like it, you like it, you know? I mean, it, uh, that's what's important. No, yeah, I understand. <laughs> Wait a second. One of the things I don't like about that concept, especially with an AK, is having that, having that, all that, all that going on right next to my face. So um, I know, I know a lot of batteries don't happen that often, but when they do, OMG. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, you know, that's just my thing, but. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of um, bullpups for that reason are reinforced in that region. Right. Yeah. Right. So, it's I mean, it's not... in the face if it blows up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know. It, usually they'll bean you right on the forehead and shoot up about 90 degrees straight up, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, let me see what we got here. Um, so okay, is the KV UFM four and uh, four vepers on your page different from the ones that are on your custom vepers? That's a Mister Holster. He wants to know. Uh, yes, they are. Um, okay. They have a, a front sight hole in them uh, for our front sight gas block. Okay. Yeah. So um, I hope that I hope that answered the question for Mister Holster. You got yeah. The huh. I said you can point it out. You got the gun there. Yeah. So here we go. Where is it? Okay. I got my. Uh, here we go. Keep him straight. He don't know what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what were we talking about? We we're talking about uh, Lola went and wiped that off. So I don't even know what that was. Okay. What we? What do I? What do you want me to show? Right there. Uh, the the front sight coming out okay. of the uh, uh, the forend there. Right. Okay. So there you go. So this. I'm assuming this is what we're talking about here. No, no. Oh. Up front. 
the front side. Oh, oh, oh front side, front side. Yeah. Sorry, right here, coming out of the yeah. Front coming, side gas. Okay, bottom. right. Okay, so this is diff. So I guess what he was asking is it it's different on the what's the difference on the uh, UFM the KT. The other UFM. one has rail that just goes covers your gas block. Oh, it just comes right over here, right? Right, and rails continue out to the end of the. the right. Forest. Yeah. This one's this one's specially notched out. Right. On your one. Okay. There we go. See. Other than that. that, there is no difference. Right. Okay. All right. So there you go. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> okay. So any plans on building on the Sega platform? That's from Patrick uh, Bentola. We're not available either. Well, yeah, um, we've, got, we've got a bunch of one-offs and prototypes that we're currently selling, um, but we don't have any more and aren't going to get any more. Um, okay. Unlikely. All right. Cool. You know what? This is a question from me. I'm just, uh, I brought in a bunch of uh, magazines and stuff like that so that I can ask you. I've got all kinds of different magazines here. What do you think about magazines? Um, any differences, any preferences for magazines? Like right here, I'm showing this is the uh, Magpul one, and yeah. then this is a uh, US Palm. The, um, the Magpuls functioned um, real well. Um, steel is always the strongest. Yeah, you know? I think this one I have here is the non steel. Yeah, just the right. plastic ones. Yeah, All right. Yeah. East so, if, huh? East German. East German. You like the East German? Uh, East German steel mags can't beat them. Sorry. Yeah, steel military mags are still um, happening. Magazines. That's okay. what we sell. Um, but the Magpul mags work well. They just aren't aren't quite as durable. Um, they. Uh, but they put a steel cage in them and stuff like that. But um, I would, I like the uh, military ones. Okay. Any magazines that you don't like? <laughs> I mean, uh, you, 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 you know, you were just talking about the bull pups. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll so. say this just because uh, <laughs> they probably want to. I think they just um, went out of business. But the the U.S. Palm mags, I really don't. Uh, care oh, about. you don't like those. Okay. Uh, we ran some tests on him, and a guy, um, well, actually, I'll leave his name out of it, but he was in Iraq, and uh, he did all kinds of testing on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, there were some failures that. Uh, okay. Would... Yeah, that's good to know. I mean, you know, this is kind of data points that people want to know out there. Um, someone wants to know if you have any recommendation on good, on, this is like in air quotes, good ammo to run in KB-13 or um, any AK. Wolf. Wolf, there you go. Wolf, surplus, just about anything. I mean, that's what's cool about them. You know, I mean, I loved it when AR-15 companies would void warranty if you used somebody else's ammo. ammo. That, that's what we used to test fire our guns with, you know. Yeah. You know, that's the that's the thing about AKs, right? I mean, you really shouldn't have to think about the ammo too much. Yeah. Right. The only there's um You trying to think of I I can sense. <laughs> think of how to not work something. Um, yeah, you're trying to frame this in a nice way. <laughs> there's some ammo out there that's a little bit weak uh but all of it seems to print and function you know yeah 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 and the, and i think the the wolf stuff is pretty good what do you think uh walter you got any preferences for a for an ak yeah i mean it's hard to not find something that doesn't work in an ak um you know it's not the same with an ar-15 you, you mentioned wolf it doesn't run as well full auto in an ar-15 as as you know regular military american military ammo but but yeah it's it's um ak it's you can pick up as a floor sweepings, as I say, and and it'll all run. So, you know, it's a, that's what's nice about it. Yeah. So um, let me see. I'm gonna. I've got someone giving us a comment on this. Kevin Dufresne says Tula is weak and underloaded, and Wolf is. Uh, I guess he's saying Wolf is more uh, military. And Al Trevick says uh, he loves Wolf military. It just runs. So, you know, yeah, there you we go. Never had um, 
any problems with it ever and we've used it forever you know mm -hmm. um, now if i had my choice i want some uh, copper washed uh corrosive old chinese stuff yeah that flies good because it flies good yeah it's dirty but you know what that's what you're supposed to clean your gun for so um you know it's but yeah that stuff that was back in the good old days or east german the east german surplus mm -hmm. you know that stuff was good too, but that's all dried up by now. So. Yeah, we're not we're not ever getting any of those coming in. No, is it ever or not anytime soon? Well, we'd have to have a drastic change to get the Chinese stuff back in again. So, yeah, uh, right. At least it'd probably not be corrosive at that point. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Well, they probably still got some old stuff sitting someplace in a in a yeah. warehouse. Yeah, no doubt, yeah. I've got some old stuff sitting there. Um, Got some underneath the bench here somewhere. So. Last time we went to the bullpup shoot here in Illinois, we uh, we ran six thousand rounds through our the Asnick pistol or the the short barreled rifle, and uh, we cleaned it every time. We'd uh, dunk it in a five gallon bucket of water and shake it off and put a new magazine and start shooting again. Yeah. And, we ran 6,000 rounds, no problems. Okay. Uh, uh, Rob Stanley saying Golden Tiger Screams. Uh, let's see, what was that? Uh, Chris B says the old Norinco ammo was good shooting stuff. Yep. You know, well, you know um, all true. Um, go ahead. It, well, to, to gas guns are sensitive to bullet weight and velocity and like any gun of the same manufacturer that one gun may like a different ammo and print better with it you know so to, in, unless you actually have defective ammo um you know testing it and checking it out um is what you should do and 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 that will make a difference yeah, we're getting lots lots of comment on the ammo. So people like the uh, ammo question here. Uh, Patrick Ventola says he seconds Norinko. Um, Eric Smith says uh, he's got uh, he has some of the, he has some of the copper wash surplus best ammo in the world. Dirty as heck, but hard hitting and hot. Uh, Mister Some Guns wants to know what do you guys think about the Red Army stuff. Um, any, I've never you know, used any of it myself, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleading ignorance on that. I, I don't know. Okay, ignorance, huh? So wait a second. Now, don't think I missed this, Mark. I didn't miss this. You just said you went to the bullpup shoot, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. What were you doing at the bullpup shoot? <laughs> uh, were sitting you, at the table. <laughs> <laughs> Well, were, were you so were you not shooting bullpups at the bullpup shoot? I I know the one the one no, in it's uh, called the bullpup shoot, but everybody brings <laughs> AKs. I and I, um, yeah, I know. I'm just teasing you. I'm one of those things you. that happens in life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm just teasing you. the uh, The bullpup shoot is put on by uh, I'm trying to remember now. Um, Manticore. Manticore. Manticore, yeah, Manticore Arms, good guys. So they're the ones putting on the bullpup shoot. So that's the thing. It's not just uh, it's the bullpup shoot and something else, but I forgot what the rest of it's called. But you know, you said bullpup shoot, so I just took that opportunity to tease you a little bit, since you obviously don't like bullpups. Man, <laughs> you're taking it hard. Um, <laughs> you pissed them off when you said hey, everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you. No, I appreciate. I now listen. So obviously, you guys, um, when you when you're testing, you do you make any of your guns full auto to test? I'm sure you do oh, that. Yeah, right? it AK. would be. Because, uh, God, I mean. You know, I mean, but, Simon needs them to be full auto for testing. Well, <laughs> yeah, but if you're going to beta test a gun, if you want to run 10,000 rounds, it takes a lot less time. I mean, I mean, it's you know, people think it's fun, and it is fun for like the first 500,000 rounds. Um, it's good, but you start getting into 10,000 rounds and you get wore out. And you don't really want to hear a gun for about three months, you know. I mean, uh, 
Yeah. What do you guys do? Do you uh, like switch guys out in the shop? Like, okay, you get the first thousand. You, oh, well, yeah. I don't know if you can even do it that no, like, way. Rotate. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta put people in and people out. Otherwise, uh, yeah. What's the sweet spot that you notice that guys get tired of the full auto? Is it like five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred? After the first couple hours of dumping mag after <laughs> mag after mag, it's it's. Uh, I guarantee you there's a bunch of guys in the chat that are absolutely willing to volunteer. Yeah. I, I know, but it would take three months. You know, that's the thing is, you know, I mean, you can't wait and pick a shot. If you do any of that, you'll be there for the rest of your life. You just got to dump mags and then bring it back and see how it held up, you know? Right. So while we're on that uh, question of my own, what do you think about, um, you know, the different a tri AK triggers that are coming out there? The trigger, for example, that you guys are putting in the KB-13 is pretty good. Uh, what is that? Yeah, the ALG. ALG. That's the ALG, right? Okay, yeah. So, um, you know, are there any other triggers that you like other than the ALG that's out there? I think that is probably the most easy and effective one you can put out there um and then there's the chip mccormick ones and i really haven't seen or felt the elfman oh, okay. uh, and uh we uh unfortunately the cmc and the elfman when they first came out were meant to work on the the full auto lug and uh so that's why we started coming out with the full auto version of uh our uh, mark six safety so that guys could put them in with the trigger packs and they, they probably have well i don't know after we because we kind of reworked the algs um but there those uh the cmc trigger is a very nice one too Oh, okay. Um, now, I happen to have one of those triggers here with this. This is like a, you know, uh, pretty, I don't want to say cheap, but uh, let's go with value priced. This is um, a milled. Yeah, this is milled. This is from ATI, believe it or not. I've, I've had this for a while. This is an ATI, and it's an underfolder. And this has the um, TACCON trigger in it for the AK. So, I, I've got I one of those in my pistol, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about it? I think it's pretty, it's pretty fast. Yeah. So and probably the easiest to install. Right. Now that's where, that's the thing that I wanted to ask you about, because I know like this is pretty much drop in, but the ALG is not, is not a drop in thing. And, and I've never installed one. And, but people I speak to have a tough time with that. Obviously you guys are putting them in guns, so it's probably easier for you. Oh, well, you got to fit the safety and, and yeah, I'll tell you one thing I learned a long time ago is, is, uh, sales go down by 70% if people have to work on it, you know, um, and the, and the, and the phone calls increase by 70% too. <laughs> Speaking from a man in the business. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, put something confusing out there and it'll, You'll get punished. Um, <laughs> yeah. It'll happen. Yeah. So it's kind of tough. I, have you guys ever made a video on that? Because I know a lot of guys prefer the ALG. It's affordable. I mean, what, what's the ALG? I think it's like seventy-five bucks, right? It's not. It's not a, 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 an expensive. No, one. It, it's not. Um, and they made it so that it could be installed pretty much by anyone. But then some people have different levels of. Uh, <laughs> Brain. <laughs> Brain. Uh, but, I'm here. I'm right here. I'm right uh, here. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, you know, man's got to know his limitations. I don't work yeah. on my car. Yeah. I just know how to break them and put gasoline in them, you know? Yeah. I like a good video. You know, when I, you know, people are always asking me to do a video on it. I haven't, I, I should probably do it. I should probably get one and do a video. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I can install it for you. Oh, okay. Did you, did you put one of the ALGs in? Me? Yeah. Did you put that in any? But I say I'll be the guinea pig for if you want me to do. Yeah. It. Yeah. Maybe we should do that. You guys don't have a video, do you, Mark? No, no we don't. Oh, okay. All right. I just figured, you know, you guys might be a good resource because well, here's what we are going to start doing this once we get our our website a little more tightened up. Yeah. Because here's what here's what I will do. Don't tell anyone about this, Mark. But I will look at your video. 
And, and, then, and then I will totally pretend that I know what I'm talking about when I do my video. <laughs> How about that? Or you could know. I mean, it's not rocket yeah. science. It's just right. you got to do it right and uh, yeah, yeah. And you you gotta gotta test it and make sure it does all the things it's supposed to. Yeah. And you know what I found? You have to be patient. That's the thing. Sometimes we lose our patience when we're installing stuff. And I do. I do install a lot of things. But, you know, it, sometimes it takes patience. And yeah. you have to read the instructions. I mean, what? Do and what? You have to read the instructions. I cannot. I, don't, I can't hear you. Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I asked, I asked Tyvin about that. Put, put the, it, I, I shipped somebody. I shipped Tyvin um, an upper, 50 caliber upper, and they were going to refit the lower and put my hammer in. And things weren't going right. And they were like, what the heck's going on? He's fighting with the hammer and everything. And it's like, oh. I didn't read the instructions. And it's like, well, duh. <laughs> as soon as you read the instructions, it went right in. So, hey. You know. Yeah. Do you ever have that problem, Mark, with your stuff where there's guys <laughs> maybe I, uh, like me that don't read the instructions? I, I, um, I have been a faithful, non-direction reading bozo all my life. And, I don't either, but. <laughs> and and I, I've been caught struggling with stuff and somebody that knows about one tenth of what I know about guns will sit there and look at the piece of paper and say, well, why don't you do this, Mark? And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, but, um, yeah. So, here's, like, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. So here's some more questions. Um, I'm not sure who was asking this. Um, I think I did know, but okay. Um, so will you guys ever consider making a AK for the poor man, like a $700 AK? Uh, I think that's from shut up and play your guitar. That's the name of the guy. To, okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's the the person who's asking that question. Will you, you know, will the Krebs AK forty seven ever be available as a mass production? So, have you guys thought about that? Um. Well, he, yeah. I mean, we, we probably wouldn't be making standard AKs, but we're trying to get it so that we can get it more in the price range of of people. I mean, there, there's. For instance, on the KV-13 or the AC-15 or the SL-2 or whatever, the parts that we make for the gun cost substantially probably another third more expensive than the than the gun, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, making all the stuff, dehorning all the stuff, chroming and heat treating and all of that. And if you do it, you, you need to do it right. Otherwise, you'll be getting it back. And, uh, you know, yeah. it, uh, the margin isn't – people think I drive around in, like, a Cadillac and stuff and uh, – <laughs> You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I, got yeah. a, I got a rusty old Jeep, and uh, yeah, there's not a there's not a huge there's not huge markups on on guns in the gun business in general. You know, um, I'm always trying to tell people that maybe you buy a gun that's 700 bucks. This the store itself maybe mark that up anywhere from like 50 to 75, maybe 100 bucks on a good day. Yeah. Well, typically uh, retail is like. 20 bucks over or I mean 20 percent excuse okay. me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know depending on what how much money they've invested in it and what they want to get out of it mm -hmm. uh, most of the time gun stores just sell guns well they do make money off of guns but all the accessories are a large part of it as well yeah, absolutely. So now I'm, I'm speaking of that and then people looking for this thing. I know in the AR world, there's more and more companies doing a bones version or a stripped down version of their gun. Um, is that even, is that possible to do in an AK that, that type would, situation? Yeah, that, that could be a, a, a neat idea. And going back to what the, the um, other man asked about uh, making a, a more straight gun, you know, making something that you could kind of build on, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, like, so maybe maybe you don't have the pistol grip, you don't have a handguard, and some other things that would add the, the price to it, they can get that and put whatever they want on it, but over time, they can buy those other parts from you or anywhere else if that's what they want to do and, and upgrade it. Right, except for the stuff that we make rifles out of, you can buy most of the components, but some of it's proprietary, you know, like uh, our front sight gas, our sights, 
sight rail and the forend are for the rifle. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, part of that's because they're not, they, they, I don't think that, that the public would put up with it. There's too much work putting them in, you know, I mean, I, I won't say it's crazy, but you got to mill out the rear sight support and you got to make sure that they're level and uh, it's, that's probably, that's another big time consuming portion of the gun. You mean you can't do it with a Dremel tool? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Dremel tool. Well, well, you know, yeah, you know, the, it's <laughs> Make the babies, yeah. The eighty percent right. idea, you know, where you're going to finish your receiver and and uh, with a with a Dremel and a and a file and and then get then I get the phone call. Why doesn't your upper work with my lower? I'm like, well, did you finish it yourself? Yeah. Well, that's why it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends well, on your skill level, like you said. Right, right. Everybody doesn't have a milling machine and know how to use it if they do. So. Yeah. Right, and um, and then a lot of times you, you screw up your first one, you know, don't get it quite right, stuff like that, and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You're gonna you're gonna uh, probably pay for the education of it. You know, we're we're all going through that. Everyone has different levels, so they have the funds getting there. Yeah, and I don't definitely, I definitely don't have that skill level. <laughs> so. Android and tools. Yeah, yeah, I don't have the tools and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, um, where where do you think like innovations going in the AK space? You know, I see there's a lot of con like comments and questions about that in the chat. So I'm just gonna like condense that and put it together. Um, you know, oh, the, what would you like to see out there, or, or what, what do you think is the future of the AK space? Well, there's a lot of different guns coming out now with. Um Oh boy, you're putting me in a tight spot again. Um, oh, yeah, because you got to be careful here, right? And walk the line of. Uh, uh, I don't. Yeah, um, I hate doing that, but I it's. Yeah. Uh, don't want to reveal anything. <laughs> kind of, um, but you uh, know, I mean, more. Everything has been geared a lot more heavily for accessory type of equipment you know, and being able to change it out and make it more universal. You know, I mean, that's what the AC stands for is adaptive carbine. You know, we, mm -hmm. we decided to make a gun that you could buy that would weigh roughly the same as regular AK, but would be decked out for anything accessory you wanted to put on it and or have all the accessories or be able to. You yeah, know, so you can go to your you can you can go to uh, your level mm -hmm. to the uh, you know the rail and then the scope mount and all that stuff. Yeah, um, I know that. Uh, Shut up and play your guitar is saying that we need an American-made AK-47 using a forged trunnions carrier bolt with old-fashioned AK laminate furniture, and uh, <laughs> and then he says he doesn't mean the RAS-47. So that's him. That's him saying that. Well, um, I agree, and um, I uh, uh, things are coming along with everybody, you know, um, in that field, and uh, so we'll wait and see. I mean, uh, I definitely would like love to see it, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, Walter, what would you what would you like to see in the development here of the AKs? Any well, well, like like we just talked about, um, real 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 good quality uh, parts made here, and there's no reason why they can't be because we can make things just as good as anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Labor labor plays a part in that too. So you know, it, there's a price point for everything, and if you have a three thousand or four thousand dollar AK, you're gonna you're gonna go to you're gonna get buried with that thing if you're trying to sell it. I mean, you're not. Gonna, I mean, quality's great, but there's you're going to pay so much. People aren't going to pay so much, you know, um, my opinion anyways. I mean, yeah. So we've got to balance out. Like if people want right. this you stuff made find, here, you gotta find the even ground, especially in this market right now. Um, the only thing I, I see wrong with any of the, the American parts is some of them aren't up to heat treat specs, but that's just laziness. <laughs> well, there's no, there's no reason for that. We can, you can build a, a a supersonic bomber. You can build an AK bolt. Sorry, I'm, I mean I'm just 
It's, no, I agree. I agree. And uh, we have we have just the same materials that the the Poles and the Russians have, and we have way better. Uh, um, a lot of times, equipment testing things. So it's just I think companies are just lazy. They don't want to take it to the extreme. Maybe they think people aren't going to shoot five thousand rounds in an afternoon, which most aren't. But you know, you if you do that and you and your gun survives, that's a selling point for doesn't cost any more to get it heat treated correctly than it does to get it heat treated under so yeah, it's, yeah I, I agree because you know it's just a matter of having a spec and having the person meet the spec so and, and using the right material to start with not cheaping on the materials or the way you manufacture it you know and there's some of that going on out there now so um but yeah like you mentioned like they mentioned like laminated wood that's not i mean we, we have laminated wood here too but uh, Europeans do a pretty good job with it, <laughs> the Poles and the Russians and all that. So I mean, I. I oh yeah. I you know. know it's tough. Yeah. Until, until you can beat their prices, it's going to be hard to. It's going to be hard to, for an American to, to justify that. I guess. Well, well, one of the the things it's like when, uh, Israel made the Galils, you know, which is an AK. Right. Um, they made them. Um, it was cheapest for them to make them like that. And the reason why is because, you know, Russia and other countries had huge amounts of uh, industrial equipment stamp this stuff out and mass produce it, mm -hmm. you know, and machining it all from billet is a less expensive way in the, you know, I mean, to amortize your tooling, it's going to take uh, much less time. Yeah, fixture you know, um, dies and, and, the, right. and, the, it, and the learning curve to do it all right. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, I mean, but the, the for everybody to have one, you know, like what Russia wanted at one point, you know, um, except for us, I guess. Um, and uh, that is to you, you have to have large industry behind it and uh that's why i mean uh, ddi uh didn't quite make it and that's kind of too bad i mean they're still hanging out but um they were on the cusp of it i think they were making nice parts and things like that and uh then they just uh couldn't take it anymore and i thought man that's a awful industrious uh challenge there you yeah know. undertaking yeah i think one of the things is like you know one of the problems that's going on is that where you have a lot of factories and things like that those parts of the country um have political upheavals that are going on right now right mm -hmm. so, so some of those like if you're if you're looking at like massachusetts and all that kind of stuff uh you know there's there's some there's facilities and everything up there and there's definitely companies they are making stuff but then there's challenges that come out of uh, manufacturing those things there. Mm. And, and if you want to now set up all that manufacturing somewhere else, it's not necessarily as easy. Mm. Or you think no, Walter? No, I'm, I'm, I'm getting barrels made up there. Okay. And, but they have, they have multiple factories in, in, in different states. But, but no, there's no challenge for those guys. They're, they're, ready, they're willing, ready and willing to, uh, to knock it out of the park. So... Um, Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's an issue so much as just the the people doing the making actually taking the time to make sure it's right. Um, well, and, and the tooling instead of, instead of making something that's kind of close, and then having somebody go out and shoot a thousand rounds in the afternoon. Yeah, well, and, that's but that's part of the problem right there. I think. I mean, if you're making something that um, I'm not saying that they're not necessarily interested in it, but I, I see I see this. I don't know from my point of view. I don't know. Maybe you guys don't see it, but I see that there's people making things. But they don't have they don't have that person there. Either the people who own the company or the people that are working there don't care enough to say, well, let's take this barrel out and test it and put a couple thousand rounds through it or whatever. So they're just making something. But if you're making things like this and you're not into it, yeah, then there's a disconnection that happens there. I think inevitably we're going to face that. You have to have like that perfect combination of you're making something and then you're into it, so you're motivated to go out and actually shoot that thing. Right? I, I'd say there's both. I mean, uh, I think you'd be surprised at what all the companies um, that you have mentioned today have done 
to ensure reliability and put them through torture tests. Less, uh, they're lying to me, but I don't really think they would be. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I don't, I don't think everyone's doing that. But I know, for example, I was having a conversation with a company that make, that's making ARs in a place where the people cannot buy an AR. You know, and then the guy, so I was just talking to the guy that was that was doing this, and I was like, you know, I, I, I tried out this particular AR, and I wasn't, I didn't think it was, um, I didn't think it was the kind of thing that would sell, just because there were these little things with it, like you pull the charging handle, the trigger, and all, the charging handle was real gritty, and trigger was terrible, all, all kinds of stuff, and I, and I asked the guy, I was like, you know, do you shoot these things? And he, he told me not really. And I was like, do you, you know, do you like ARs? You know, are you into ARs? And then he told me he was into AKs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's like, you know, that's a weird, I'm not saying everyone does that. I'm just saying sometimes that's a disconnect. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. And it has been, you know. Once again, we uh, some people have suffered from the Hillary complex too, that they thought she was going to win. And that's why they didn't care. They could have sell that AR that doesn't work half the time because somebody would buy it irregardless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one thing that the bands have definitely done is give. God, I, I know magazines that that didn't work and stuff oh, yeah. from like twenty years ago, and they keep resurfacing from oh, yeah. the warehouse. Yeah. You know, and, uh, the crap they push off on people is uh, can yeah. be. In in those tight situations, you yeah, know? that's true. Yeah, I agree with you. A lot of there, people were selling a bunch of stuff when everyone was buying everything, but now that everyone's not buying everything, if you're not making something that's good quality, then you're. Well, and another yeah. thing too is once again, let's let's talk about this testing thing. There's a lot of people out there that are willing to uh, websites that say that they're willing to go out and see if they can break something, and um. You know, so they shoot it five thousand times until it breaks or it melts or whatever. And you know, um, I have never seen a more willing crowd. Oh. I, I, we sold a guy. Uh, one of our early models was the KTR, and uh, guy bought his. I think it was twelve hundred bucks or something like that at the time. Bought his brand new rifle, hooked it up to the back of a jeep, and <laughs> drug it down the road. Yeah. For, uh, quite a ways and uh, gave us a great review. He said it still held zero and stuff, and um, we were all happy. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine why a guy wants to take one of his own guns. Thank you. And do that to it. But oh, it's a free country. <laughs> well, that's right. And I'll tell you, AK guys, I when I was building pistols, I'd come across a nutball about every 14 months and i thought good god getting into the ak business you know what's, what's gonna what's gonna happen the most mellow crowd however i will say man if stuff ain't working you yeah, are you're on the shit list to beat them. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, we yeah. used to block them. I, we'd caught the four ends on uh, Mac, well, they weren't Mac 90s then, but Chinese AKs. You know, they, hey, Rafe, your four ends on fire. You better put it out. You know, it's like, oh, damn, you know, Cosmoline and the Balsa would get together and mm -hmm. bust. Yeah. You know? yeah, you know, some of us YouTube guys. <laughs> I know we, you know, we we do some crazy things. I think if you've got the ability to, you know, do it, hey, it's entertainment. YouTube, yeah, three of us. <laughs> oh, oh, no, okay. I thought you were still talking. I'm sorry, I, I got distracted by something over here. I thought you were still talking because you were talking about like how you know people. Walter was talking about how people do the YouTube guys. Yeah, I mean, crazy I, I, tests. I understand the torture testing, but I don't understand dragging it down a road. Um, mm -hmm. and then, you know, complaining that the stock's falling off. Right. If you drag anything long enough, it's going to fall apart. So. I don't care how good it's made; it's going to fall apart. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I guess you know in re in the real world is somebody going to take the Krebs gun that he just paid twenty five hundred dollars for and and throw it off the draw the back of the truck and drag it along? Probably not. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're not going to do it with a Century Arms gun either, for the most part. Um, so I, that part of it, I don't think is very uh you know it's not a true test of 
of how well it is. Now, shooting at 5,000 rounds and watching the metal deform, yeah, that is. That is. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there you go. Yep. But the average, you know, and we have often admit the average guy is never going to shoot 5,000 rounds through his AK. Yeah. There's a balance. So yeah. let me let me explain this to you guys a little. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm being facetious, but there's a, there's a, there's this thing called making videos that like, you know, there's some things that take time. So it really, it takes time as we were talking about before to put 5,000 or 10,000 rounds through something that takes a lot of time, right? Definitely. Yeah, and yeah, you know, you're not but if wasting ammo, yeah, if you yeah, try, but if you if you do <laughs> well, it takes a long time. Yeah, but you know, it's real quick to just tie something up to the back of your truck. Well, that's true. Yeah, drag it down, drag it down the road. That's like a five minute video. I, I, I so, forgot. I forgot. Yeah, so that's the balance. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not taking sides. I think uh, you know we have to have like a healthy balance in there. Yeah. Um, that Thank everyone you. everyone needs to have perspective on what's happening in, in manufacturing on the manufacturing side on the side of, of the guys like myself that are making the videos and then even the audience watching those videos has to think about what they're watching <laughs> right yeah, I actually yeah. like the videos because I you know we uh, build our stuff to last you know we we meet military specs and stuff like that you know and um, when you see guys claiming the same thing and then there's uh take a poop you know um yeah, then yeah. You're, okay well there yeah you, you know yeah like uh chris b says he likes the torture test that mac does on, on military arms channel that he's uh, a little bit more realistic you know i think it's some of it is uh, more entertainment or whatever but i think it's still um it drives yeah. up. It drives up the views. That's yeah, it's still reference points and stuff like that. You know, um, just like doing crazy things that you look like you're going to hurt yourself. You know, just it, it gets views and things. Okay, so um, I know someone mentioned was or was asking the question if we'll get interchangeable barrels and things like that. What do you What do you think about that? The Russians just did one of those. I just saw it on um, uh, one of the new Russian guns. Uh, just yeah, saw it on the firearms blog. Yeah, Milan yeah. came out with one. Yeah. Now that, we, now, uh, now that we can't bring them in, they, they made one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd probably be neat. I, I'll tell you, though, I've back in the day, you know, I'd make guys like uh, 45s that would have a 9 conversion unit and a, and a 22 conversion unit. And 90% of the time, people pick up the gun and they just shoot it the way that it is I'd, I'd rather have interchangeable barrels is something that we've looked into a little bit um and does ha have some uh functional use but it's uh, mainly i think important for machine guns you know and uh yeah like going to say you know what the thing is i think there's a huge difference between uh what's very cool obviously there's things that are very 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 cool but it doesn't mean that a lot of people are going to buy that. So that's another thing you guys have to balance in your in your in your minds when you're thinking about this stuff, right? You can make something that's super cool that you could buy this, and it could be you know seven six two, and then five four five, and it you know six five Grendel. It could go to all these different things. But if only ten people in America want that thing, it's not worth anything. Yeah, you know, then that's not necessarily. You know, it's good for education, but it, it's not right. I mean, uh, w like I said, we're making the 6.5 rifles. We're doing proof of concept now, and then we'll try, you know, batch 25 and see how many people want to um, go tech driving with an AK, you know, because uh, bolt guns will do it all day long, you know, if you got them worked right. Um, still takes gunsmith and well it's not in some right off the rack but uh for a semi-auto i think uh it's probably the uh perfect ratio of accuracy and reliability yeah so what do you think about like nine millimeter you guys um that's that cool but the gun's a rifle you know mm -hmm. if you want a nine millimeter build one um the Evo is cool, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not. I, I'd probably own one. 
<laughs> okay, but you, you you don't you don't see the the interest level to to uh, build like a nine millimeter, AK. Well, it's it's a cool idea, and I did build one in six five, um, or not six five, um, seven six two by twenty five mm -hmm. at one point. But um, it it um, you know, if you ever gone to a machine gun shoot and everybody's shooting belt guns and rifles and stuff, and you go out there with nine millimeter sub gun it. <laughs> feel like you're shooting a pellet rifle you know i mean uh oh, okay and uh yeah. it's rifles are king i mean right yeah. go through okay. stuff and they are powerful yeah that makes sense um someone wants to know i think it's matt um n47 he wants to know why did uh why did you stop making the ktr09 i'm not sure if i um I'm, I not even, saw, uh, I'm not sure even what that was. What was that? Let me see. That was a uh, that was our KT. Well, it was a KTR 03 was the first gun. 09 was the second gun, and mm -hmm. that had an adjustable scope rail on it. Oh, and, okay. Um, there was a, a that was probably the most expensive part we ever made, and uh, it was brutal getting them together and fitting them and doing all that and we just didn't make that much money on it and uh we finally figured out how to get your rear sight in the back and a scope rail on there oh i see yeah all that okay. yeah it looks cool but you're saying those were really difficult to uh to manufacture yeah it, it was time and cost mainly of making that scope rail because the all the Incidental pieces beyond the scope rail were cast steel, and th that was an arm and a leg, and the, so was the tooling. You know. Oh, okay. Is that the same thing that happened with the uh, folder? I know that you know, well, the uh, the the adapter to do folding, because I think with the uh, with the KV thirteen, you know, you used to be able to get these where you could fold it, right? Right, and you still can. We do okay. offer it as an option. Oh, you do. Okay. Uh, so you guys yeah. are making those again? Uh, holding stocks are cool, but once again, you know, it's like um, it, it's a little more solid, and it's um, it saves a lot of cost. You know, those Ace folding hinges are like hundred and thirty bucks just for the hinge before you get to all that. You know. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So um, here's a question from um, I think it's eighty five Marky Mark. He says. Do you think uh, the military or law enforcement will ever adopt the AK platform? And have you ever been approached? Yeah, well, yes, by small police departments in the south and way up north. But other than that, um, that's that interesting. People, people that are in, like uh, we we sent them to Alaska, and that's a perfect place. You know that the guns will shoot in fifty below. That's what you need. You know, um, and you know once you start to get to a, a certain point of cold, expanding gases or or heat, basically. You know, and uh, <laughs> you <laughs> you start running out of power if the temperature goes too low. Okay. Okay. BTUs. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think we got a comment from uh, Rob Stanley. He says, uh, you're a true genius, and he's proud to call you a friend. So, Well, I don't know about the genius part, but shucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so here's a question for both of you guys, and uh, I guess we'll start, we'll start with you, Mark, and then we'll find out from Walter. Uh, what's your favorite AK of all time? Mark, in, in the military setting, um, you know, just it's up to you. What's the so what's that the, I made or come across? Yeah, of all time, like what's you know, what's the most awesome AK to you ever? It's okay if you if you know you can say something from Krebs. That's you know, I wouldn't hold that against you. Um, 
Well, there's man, there's a lot of people out there that do cool stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they do it for different reasons. Like our, our guy Alex here uh, did one that that looks like uh, what's that game? Um, Fallout. One of yeah, oh, right. Fallout. Okay, cool. Yeah, and uh, um, you know, he posted it on YouTube, and you know, fifty percent was hate mail, and the other <laughs> admiration. You know, um, that's how I, you know you're doing it right. <laughs> I, I actually, I built a dragon pistol a uh, long time ago um, hmm. for the Bianchi Cup, and Chiro Nagata was the guy shooting it. And they featured it in a, a book called Gun Games at the time. And, man, I got hate mail. I had a guy. It, there was a, a strange gun. It would track on the dust cover, and uh, it was a bizarre-looking thing. And it had a, a tongue, like a snake tongue, and it was all twisty and forked, you know. And um, some guy said, well, that's going to hook on your, you know, on your, you know, your holster or your you know, your waist, and like, what? You know, I mean, uh, really? Okay. You're going to take a dragon gun, you know, that weighs a pound and three quarters and uh, shoot steel rounds at them, you know? Because steel guns are supposed to be very light, so you can transition targets quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I've got some people, like, um, uh, chiming in here. Fallout AK, they like the idea of that. I, ha I haven't seen it. I need to see... Uh, I need to see that. Uh, Shut up and play your guitar, says his Steyer Mahdi is his favorite of all time, followed by the Yugo M70AB2UF. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, what, do, what do you think, Walter? What's your favorite? What, what do you think is the coolest AK I ever? I had to do something I could pick. I, I'm kind of old school with the AKs. I'd, I'd take an old, uh, um, an old milled Russian military straight up 47. Um, that's just, that's just me, you know, that's, uh, you know, the, the Polish ones, uh, from the fifties were freaking awesome. They, on the detents, they had little flanges. So you didn't chip your fingernail to, to like take off the flash hider, you know, on the detents. Okay. okay. I mean, old world craftsmanship on those guns. Right. They were, yeah, those, those old, those old early, uh, milled guns are very cool. Um, that's that stuff I like. Um, yeah. Um, let me see. Mongo the Destroyer 88. These guys have some some cool names. <laughs> Mongo the Destroyer 88 says, when you AK too much and can't decide because you know better. <laughs> so it's it's probably like, you know, you got, you've got your babies and stuff like that, right? You got to choose. Do you have some cool AKs that we can show? You know, we, we've been doing it for two hours, but before we go, I got, you know, let's throw. I'm surprised that Walter hasn't thrown up any AKs yet. I got lazy. So, I was eating right before we got on here. So. Yeah. So what? So what about you guys, Mark? Do you guys have some cool? You know, let's get some gun porn going on here. What? What can we throw up? What can we show? Okay. You know what? While you guys are doing that, uh, when you guys are figuring that out, um, I'll show something that I pulled up from. Um, this was actually in the store, and this is from WMD Guns. This is your. Um, this is a uh, Sentry Arms RAS forty seven, but WMD guns that does refinishing. They like um, distress. You know, yeah, they did the distress looked, but the nickel boron finish. I think it's like Nibex. If I, if I, uh, I think I got that right. But look at that man. They made this a beautiful gun. <laughs> so Big Daddy Guns is selling this right now. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna do some uh, more stuff with WMD guns because. They are, folks have been asking me about the uh, Stag Arms 308 giveaway that we're doing. And we sent the, uh, we got a Bones version of the Stag Arms and then we got a bunch of really cool parts. And then we sent it to WMD Guns for them to do the finishing. So I think this is really cool, man. I like the, that finish. That's yeah. sexy. Yeah, if you're into that, that's cool. Uh, oh, I sense you're not into it. Well, <laughs> what does that mean? This looks cool. I thought you would like this, man. It looks old, but it's got this really beautiful finish on it. If they told me you brought that back from uh, Afghanistan, yeah, I'd be a little more. Uh, oh, oh, but so you don't like it because it looks like it's old, but it's new. It's not. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Kind of, sort of, yes. I mean, nothing. I mean, like I said, different strokes, different folks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had, we had, a, we had a Noveski pistol in the shop. Believe it or not. 
Mm -hmm. At least it had an Obesky lower on it that looked like a star, like a Star Wars gun. It was um, had that white distressed look about it. Right. With the paint and everything, that looked cool. That was all right. You know, I mean. Yeah. Um, long I like that look. I like that look on there. Uh, here's another. This has nothing to do with AKs, but I promise. I think people probably saw this in my promo picture. Check that out. Ch yeah, this is a Gen Five. We're still waiting for the. We're waiting for Craig, so I'll, I'll so let, just show. Let me get this straight now. So basically, Gen Five is a Gen One with a with a Picatinny rail on it. <laughs> Maybe. Right? Yeah, this one has the Ameriglo Ameriglo sights on okay, it. They, they've, yeah. taken the, they've taken all the bumps off the. Yeah, the, and made it smooth again. Yeah, and I wish you know what and, I. And there's the you know there's a close up look at the finish. I'll try to do. I mean, it does. The finish feels uh feels a little, you know, feels different. But I mean, obviously, you really can't tell anything over time. Yeah, it's not it's not super sexy or exciting to anyone. Um, that came into Big Daddy Guns. That's the uh, 17 version. We got hey, let me, uh, let me throw something by you and anybody else. Um, SOG has. Uh, Police trade-ins, forty-five Gen Gen three Glocks for three twenty-nine. Oh, okay, forty for three twenty-nine. Okay, that's not bad. That's and true. then now they've got like a little red follower in there, I guess, like the Magpuls, you know, and the magazines. The magazines are a little different, but you can, you know, they're still backwards compatible, I guess. Right. You can use, right. Your, you can use your old magazines with it. I think um, have the front end always been like that on the um. No, they um they did some they did some stuff here to the front yeah, end. Front yeah. end, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, it, I wish they'd I wish they'd make a special run of Gen One Seventeens. I'd buy. Them. Yeah, I'd I'll take this. I'll take this apart real quick. You know, just so we can, just so we can. Uh, here, doing doing anything on camera not easy. Oh, no, I just thought of an AK that's really um. So there you go. There's the insides of this. Uh, the spring, eh, I guess the spring is a little bit different. Let's see the, the barrel. The barrel they changed, so we're supposed to have gotten like a match grade barrel. There you go. Okay. And check out the barrel. Shiny, shiny. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's it's okay. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I. once again, I. I can't hate on it. It's a Glock. Well, I'm not going to, no. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's not that. I don't the, uh, the trigger feels pretty much the same to me, so I'm guessing they didn't really do a lot of stuff there, but you know. And I guess some tolerances are a little tighter. Okay, it looks like um, okay, it looks like Krebs is ready to show us some awesomeness. Okay. Okay, here we go. We were just showing handguns. <laughs> while you, while you guys, I was just showing the uh, Gen Five Glocks. We uh, got some into the store. So. I don't know if you're into that kind of stuff, Mark. Probably not. Um, no, nah, if I carried one, I'd probably carry a Glock. Um, oh, okay. But you're probably still on Gen 1 or 2, right? Hey, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Come on. No, I think it's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool, man. They're kind of the AK-47 of pistols. I mean, uh, some things run. Yeah. And I, and I hate them, too, you know, because uh, <laughs> 45 builder, you know, and... and uh, but man, they, they just run and run and run. Oh, okay. Um, what's your what's do you uh, what's your EDC mark? Can we ask you that? Our, my what? So uh, your your everyday carry. Uh, someone asked. Someone's asking this question um, for both of you guys. What's your EDC since um, Illinois was the last state to adopt uh, CCLs or concealed carry licenses? You guys. I just um, got a rifle in the car. Huh? I just got a rifle in the car. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. You know, can't knock you for that. What about Simon? You want to chime in? I, well, I carry either a shield or a Glock 23 converted to nine. Oh, okay. So either I, because you were a little quiet there, I think you said the shield or a Glock 23 converted to nine millimeter. And shield is a nine. Also. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a nine guy. So. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much for mags. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. And then someone wanted to know about the 556 AK that takes AR mags. Um, what no, that's not. That's yeah, not what do you guys um, what do you guys think about that? About the century? Um, I think it's um I, I think it's kind of a cool idea. I um 
but there's <laughs> gas piston, uh, primary extraction, primary closing, long dwell time, two-point hinged magazine. These are all things that all reliable guns share. And I don't like air mags that much because they they pivot in the middle there and go high and low. Okay. Okay. And so I, I'm not a big fan. I've made a few of them. I uh, made one in 6.5 actually once. Uh, and gun work great. Stay open on the last round stuff. But uh, it kind of got to machine off a little bit of the back of the locking lug, which is not necessarily dangerous. But once you touch that point, you've kind of screwed up. You know, if anybody ever has a mishap. Yeah. So we kind of. Yeah. Stay okay. Open. So let's go to AK porn now. What you guys got? Show us some awesomeness. Okay. Here we um, go. This is a uh, KTRO3 short version. Um, oh. And this is full auto. Yeah, everything we got was out of the full auto cabinet. Um, nice. And uh, this cool gun. And uh, it, it's. Uh, one of my favorite guns we built, really. Uh, yeah, I like the. What's the main features of that? Is that that old um, the uh, the w where the gas cover is the uh, rail? Is that the rail we were talking about earlier, or that's a different one? No, yeah, this is different. Okay, this, this is the O three. This the O three. Okay. Well, I actually I can show the rail in just a second. Oh, okay. Um, this is just a version that was full auto and it was fun to make um, and shoot. This one was actually kind of cool. Um, there was a, a guy, who I will leave his name out of it, that was uh, with Blackwater, and they were uh, um, had a large cache of brand new AMDs that they could get hold of. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we made kits for them basically hmm. and uh this is the uh the scope mount oh so you made them the kits and sent it to them so that they can make the guns look pretty much like right that. well okay. at the end of the day they didn't end up using them uh, mm -hmm. but uh what happens is you you pull out this pin um Once the cameras get going, you know, oh, look, oh, there you go. And then this lifts uh, up. Cool. Okay. And, uh, but as I said, it was such an expensive thing and nobody ever wanted them. We even still got some for PSLs that aren't around anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, what, the, that top, that skull mining arrangement you're talking about on the top for the PSL? Yeah. Okay. This part. Um, then this is our older style quad rail, which we still make. Uh, the military buys these occasionally. Um, and uh, so we still keep it in action. It's probably the strongest fore end out there. Uh, we made it like a, uh, you know, brick shit house. And yeah. Um, I know. Is it just aesthetic, those uh, circle portholes up front? I like how they look. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the countersinks are offset a little bit so you can go faster. Uh, uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I almost believed you for a split second. <laughs> oh, I can. <laughs> you had me going with countersink, and I was like, what? <laughs> um, uh -huh. they, then, you know, we made an adapter for the back of the AMD that fits in there and provides a scope mount uh, latch point. Yeah, that looks pretty sexy. Is it? Uh, is it heavy? Your special. What does your special? Uh, you know, I don't know. Endo, it, endo scale. About seven and a half pounds, something like that. Okay. You know. Um, and then uh, let's see. Oh yeah, four ten shotgun made uh -oh. before they came out with the. Uh, the um, the other ones uh, that look like a 74, 
Actually, I've got one of those that I'm going to convert. And, you know, I still, I don't, like, personally, I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm just going to shorten it up to 14 inches and uh, just have it as my gun. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people underestimate uh, 410. For Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think that's cool, man, a 410. Well, the you know, they'll shoot five 32 caliber balls at about, you know, 1200 feet per second. Yeah. You got to, that's got to look nice. Full auto, man. Kind of like, uh, you know, five round burst. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Here's a suggestion. You know, obviously you guys probably don't need the suggestions, but here's a suggestion when you guys do the, some videos, just, um, you know, like you can call it from the full auto vault or something like that. Show us some of those full auto guns running every now and then. Well, you should, you should come over and, just, you can yeah, you, you you oh. can come over and we can okay. blaze them. Uh, Simon, you should have never offered me to come over yeah. and G42. and shoot the because I'm come. Uh, I'm Walter. Are you going with me? We should make a special pro pilgrimage out there. Pilgrimage back to the motherland. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We we should we need to do this. They just offered. We got to do it before they rescind and go. Hey, you know we're kind of busy. Oh, we take out, <laughs> hose down. I mean, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to ask. Pounds for free publicity and things like that. You know, so yeah, we, I, yeah, I will definitely we, come we, out there and, hang with you guys. and uh, take you out shooting. Not in that order, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. shooting, PJ, yeah. then yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds like fun. We should do that, Walter. What were you going to ask, Walter? Oh, I was going to ask, how far do you guys have to go to shoot out outside? Do you have a range close by, or do you have to go out? Well, the we, we have a range close by, but where we would go to shoot machine guns is probably a couple hours away from here. Okay. Okay. Found we go to the old Blackwater site. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, um, Actually, it's called the site. I should call yeah, it. Site, yeah, I, w I went to the site before I went to the site before Blackwater even was out there. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we'll we'll do that. Okay, what else you got? Let's see. What that looks. Uh... MG forty two. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, PKM. Um, okay, so Simon didn't really show us that, but it but it looks cool. He's going to get it. Um, oh, he's got it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he came in here on his 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 own time, but. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, uh, yeah, we're gonna wrap up as soon as we as soon as we get some uh, gun porn out of the way. While you were going, I was I thought of another old AK that I like. Um, the, uh, the the Hungarian the Hungarian milled guns are really. I, I just like the way they were made. You know the quality of them and stuff. The yeah, Hungarians and the Poles seem to make the straightest AKs, stamped or machined. Right, well, yeah, and the mil the stamped Hungarian guns another favorite of mine too. So, yeah. Right, I mean, they're they're uh, God. You look at them receivers, and they're just straight as a whistle, man. I mean, they're beautiful. The, the Russian guns aren't as pretty as they are, you know. Um, I don't think they build them any better, but um, the uh, yeah, the the Hungarian and Polish are, are beautiful, and, and even some of the Bulgarian guns too. Yeah. Yep, what's yep. this? Uh, what's this? The, uh, this is the PKM. Um, it's a 7.62 by 54R. Oh, okay. Can you uh, hold it up a little bit for us? I'm sorry. I don't. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There you go. Look at that awesomeness. <laughs> you sing when you put it in front of the camera, too. I do that all the time. That's a sign of genius. I'm just going with that. Oh, well, it, it's a beautiful gun. Yeah. Uh, we blew the dust cover off of it. I got to put that back on before we take it out again, but. Very reliable gun. Uh, let me down maybe three times, and I, God, we put, I do not know how much ammo we've got through this gun. We've shot it a lot. Mm. Very cool. What were you going to say, Walter? No, no, the PK is, PK is cool. Yeah, they, they're, they're hard to beat. You know, that's, there's, we don't really have anything in inventory that we, the Americans have that can compare to the PK, so. At least in my opinion. Uh, yeah, and I've talked to people uh, that say that, um, yeah, like the uh, you can't you can tweak them a little bit more to the side on the belt and stuff like that um, than you can with the 
you know, 240 and stuff like that. Yeah. I know a one guy that was shooting them out of, uh, he was in a river and he said, uh, and he was blazing one and it actually pulled reeds through the belt. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when he was done, he looked at it and was going. One, one thing about Russian weapons is it's uh, they keep it simple. So, you know, it's, it's designed simple, it's built simple. Um, so simple people can use it. Well, you know, I'll tell you, man, and just about everything on them is very well thought out and for a reason, you know. Um, excellent. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, all right. So th there you go. I gave you guys some cool gun porn. We, we sat here and uh, got some very good wisdom from Mark Krebs. Okay. I think it was... You got to let me know ahead of time, and then we could just have a little parade for a while. Yeah, we could, yeah, um, we could just go. Yeah, we could. You could probably just sit there and just show guns and not talk. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah, you know. All right. So you know what, man? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, you know, um, any anything that you want us to uh, check out? You know, any last words that you have here, Mark? Well, we um, yeah. You know, there is. Um, I I have a uh, there's he's a friend and a customer of mine and uh his wife has brain cancer and uh we're gonna be raffling off a rifle and we started asking other groups to do this um to you know uh show his gofundme page this guy's like working a shift and a half has no okay and stuff and we'd like to uh do that and then sharps and uh uh, J Mac and Liberty um, donated a suppressor. Uh, John Sharps, uh, a AK receiver, J Mac um, gift certificate, um, and uh, we're still calling up a few other people to get it going. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, but uh, you know, it's a good thing that you guys are doing. Um, I don't know if there's any way that you could send us a link through the chat here or something like that, or email it to us, and then we'll put it in the description of this video oh, if you we like. Got, we got you earmarked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. We, we, we've been stalking you, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, we would love to do that. It sounds like a good cause. You know, it's a terrible thing. I'm sure that's you know pretty tough on on him and the rest of his family but a, a, absolutely anything that we can do we'll be happy to do it well cool okay so if people want if people are listening right now what can they do to uh help out on that well we're gonna we're gonna send out stuff to everybody with uh his gofundme page and uh um and a little introduction and we'll send you one as well. And okay, cool. Okay, so that's coming up. You guys don't have that. It's not right, done right now. Like that. Yes, that okay. Is, coming. We are still trying to figure out the details, but this is definitely coming. We're gonna post it all over Instagram and Facebook and, and Twitter. Um, so uh, you gotta come a little closer to the microphone, Simon, so sorry. folks can hear you. Um, so we're going to have it posted all over Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And then we're definitely going to uh, send you a link. Okay. Yeah, yeah cool. Soft spoken when he's screaming in the shop. Okay. <laughs> he's tired. He's tired. He's been working all day. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know, I mean, you know, people so long. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that doesn't sound like Simon at all, but, uh, you know, I believe you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, Walter, is there something, you know, first of all, please do keep us in mind. And uh, when you do when you do that and you have all that stuff up, um, either you guys can, you know, you guys can come back on the show as like a guest or something like that or whatever you want to do or let us know and, and we'll talk about it, you know, maybe for like a whole week or something like that on the show. We'll keep plugging it. Cool. Okay. That's, yeah. that's great. And yeah. uh, say hello to your lovely wife and we will. Uh, yes. We will so talk to you. Know, yeah, absolutely. Stay right there. Don't go anywhere. I'm not going don't anywhere. Go, yeah, don't go anywhere. Walter, anything you want to plug before I have my say here? Oh, hey, we got some single shot lowers that are ready to ship and some 80% single shot lowers for you do-it-yourselfer guys. So, um, But anyways, 
Oh, 80 percenters. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're breaking into new ground here. Uh, wow. So the 80 percent. So that's an 80 percent 50 uh, 50 upper. The single shot lower that we make for the 50 caliber uppers. Yeah. Oh, sweet. So I'm opening okay. myself up to all kinds of phone calls now. Yeah, yeah. Call Safety Harbor Firearms. Yeah, yeah, get your hands on the 80 percent. <laughs> You're supposed to be interviewing me and you're plugging yourself. <laughs> what, what's going on here? <laughs> you're around your you're Fabrizio, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's go ahead, go ahead, Walter. Facebook, Instagram, you know, Sten parts. Don't forget about poor little Sten parts. Yeah. Um, and um, um um for all the all your um Hold up, hold up that uh, Trump rooster patch to the camera so we can see that, Walter. Come really close. Ooh, that's yeah. These are available too if anybody wants one. They're five bucks, so you yeah. Know, maybe okay. we can. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, those are. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to get us some of those. Okay, cool. All right, so you know, uh, Mark mentioned uh, El Tenda Fabrizio. Yes. Hopefully I said that properly because, you know, I've been pretty terrible. There's like a whole bunch of messages coming through. Um, I don't know why. There's like a oh, crap ton. Oh, No, yeah. no, that's you know, what, huh? Text you like 25 times a day. I mean, <laughs> this dude can't go to the bathroom without telling you about it. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's very <laughs> prolific. Let's just put it that way. So we can't forget about him. We got to shout him out. We got to remind people to go subscribe to his uh, channel. It's um, it's El Tenda Fabrizio. There you go on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. Okay. So you know what? Um, I want to thank everyone that was in the chat. We have a lot of people even right now listening and hanging out in the chat and all that. I'm sure we didn't get to everything, but um, if you guys still have questions, you can hit up uh, Krebs Custom on Facebook. They're on Instagram. You know, hit those guys up, and I'm sure they'll try to get your uh, questions answered and stuff like that. Um, you know, I want to thank everyone that sponsors my channel, which we're talking about, of course, Safety Harbor Firearms, as well as uh, Rand CLP, Andrews Customs, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. Yo, Big so, Daddy. Yeah, you know, that's that's who gives us this space here and the uh, broadband and all that kind of good stuff. Gives us access to guns. That's where I, that's where I got my hands on a Gen 5 that I'll, I'll talk to you guys about probably tomorrow or something like that. You know, we'll talk about the Gen 5 more in depth. So big shout out to Big Daddy Guns. Of course, I want to thank everyone that supports us on Patreon. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. And nowadays with everything going on with uh, YouTube and demonetizing, they're even going back and like demonetizing my back catalog here on the channel. So we've got about 600 and somewhere between 650 and 670 videos. And they're going back and uh, demonetizing old videos that are a year, two years old. So we, we can uh, definitely use your support here, you know, and we are um, Patreon slash Hank Strange. Of course, I want to thank uh, Walter as well as um, El Tenda for coming in. And uh, Mark, Simon, you guys were awesome. Well, yeah. thank you. And um, you guys are awesome too. Thank yeah. you for having us. Right. Yes. And cool Sten parts. <laughs> so yeah. we'll be running it here real soon. Just got oh. it together. So. Oh, cool. Okay, you just put to, you just put your own stand together. Nice. Yeah, using using some uh, parts from the man there. Oh, you actually ordered parts from Walter. Yeah, That's cool. They did actually. Uh, I believe my son had contact with um, you guys up there. So on the phone. Oh. So yep, yep. yep. Sweet. Um, Mark, did you get the uh, Hank Strange discount when you bought those parts? You don't even. Get it. You don't even get it. You know, um, after being crunched on a bit myself, I don't ask for freebies. <laughs> well, kind of, kind okay. of like, you know, we, hey, could I could I give you fifty cents for a buck? You know? It's like. <laughs> okay, so what about okay? Listen, can we get can we get Mark and Simon? Can we get them at least like a Trump rooster patch, Walter? How about that? We can work on that. Yeah. yeah. You guys, there you go. You guys do patches? Any? Yeah. You know. Yeah, do you guys do patches? Sure. Yeah, sure. yeah okay, well, I'll get you some. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can get a patch exchange thing going on here. Okay, that's it. I got no more haggling to do. I want to thank everyone for watching. It's been awesome. Uh, you know, I usually end my, my videos like, with the peace signs. Peace out, people. Peace. peace. See you tomorrow. Guys, have a good day, and thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, absolutely.